From Floyd Casey Stadium in Waco, Texas, Baylor football hosting the Washington State Cougars. Hi, everyone. I'm John Morris alongside J.J. Joe. We welcome you into our broadcast this evening. This broadcast available to you this evening on FSN will mix Baylor Vision, which provides the in-house video and the suites here at the stadium, along with feeding the video board with our radio broadcast on the Baylor ISP Sports Network so that you can enjoy both on FSN this evening. And, J.J., this game uh, brought to you on a Friday evening because of the approach of Hurricane Ike. Yeah, a big change for both teams, uh, very much for Washington State because they have to travel and play all in one day. But, you know, the players, are adapt. they're adapt. They'll adapt well, and the coaches have them prepared, and I think we'll see a pretty good game this evening. Pac-10 uh, represented by Washington State. They are 0-2 on the season. Baylor is 1-1 one one on the year, the host team, obviously, in this game this evening. And J.J. coming off a very solid effort in a win over Northwestern State last Saturday. Yes, everybody played well. The defense played well. Offensively, Robert Griffin and, and Jay Finley had very good games. So they have to build on that. If they build on that, against a team that's struggling just a little bit, we should get a W. Both teams with first-year head coaches, Baylor with Art Bryles, Washington State led by Paul Wolf, who's a Washington State alum, has spent the last eight years as the head coach at Eastern Washington, and uh, they may be reeling a bit. They're 0-2 and coming off a 66-3 loss at home to Cal. Yes, two tough games. Uh, once again, one against Oklahoma State, one against, uh, uh, of course, California. So uh, we can build on that, but you have to start early. So that's our matchup this evening, infringing a bit on the high school games in the state of Texas, and we apologize for that. But we are very glad you're with us. Baylor, Washington State football coming up from Floyd Casey Stadium in Waco. Stay with us. We'll have the starting lineups and the opening kick when we come back. You're watching Baylor football versus Washington State on FSN. Welcome in to Floyd Casey Stadium in Waco. It's Baylor, Washington State, the Big 12 versus the Pac-10 tonight. The toss of the coin has just been adjudicated at midfield. Baylor has won the toss. They have deferred to the second half. Washington State has elected to receive. J.J. Joe, that means the Bears will take that wind at their back. And as you mentioned early on, this uh, wind could be a factor, an ever-increasing factor as the game goes on. Yes, and Baylor is kicking. It's kind of swirling, John. They're kicking with the wind, so hopefully they can pin. We're thinking they're going to pin Washington State back. And Washington State really has struggled on offense. Now they play two good teams, so uh, we'll see how the Baylor defense goes and how, what Coach Norwood's strategy is uh, for this game. All right, Bears set to kick off. We'll give you the starters coming up in just a moment. Washington State is 0-2 on the season. Baylor is 1-1. The kicker for Baylor is the freshman, Ben Parks, out of Argyle High School. Back deep to receive for Washington State. Chris Ivory out of Longview and Chance Staten out of Campbell, California. Kick is away from right to left. An end over end kick taken on the right side by Chris Ivory to the 10, the 15, the 20, the 30 burst through to the 40. Watch out at the 50. Tackle made by Ben Parks at the Baylor 45-yard line. But Chris Ivory, one of seven Texans on the Washington State roster, makes the return a nice one for Washington State to start this game this evening. And, John, that seam really opened up. It actually was a shorter kick than everyone expected. It, he caught it around the five, 7 to 10-yard line. He found the seam, made maybe one cut, and he got Washington State fantastic field position to start the game. Let's give you the starters as we can. First for Baylor defensively. Leon Freeman, Jason Lamb are the ends. Vincent Rhodes, Trey Bryant, the tackles. Let's go back to action as Washington State is right at the line of scrimmage. Junior quarterback Kevin Lapina to get the start in the shotgun. Takes the snap, flares it out right side. This one is caught and then tackled by Chance Staden. Staden uh, tackled by Baylor's Antonio Johnson. Starters for Baylor, Antonio Johnson, Antonio Jones, and Joe Pavelic, very active and athletic group of linebackers. Secondary Jordan Lake and Jeremy Williams are the safeties. Dwayne Crawford, the senior from Giddings. Chris Burke, the sophomore from Mesquite, are the corners. Give you Washington State starters offensively after a gain of two. It is second down and eight from the Baylor 43-yard line. In the shotgun, twin receivers left. Lopina has time over the middle, incomplete. 
Tried to thread the needle right over the middle, but it was incomplete intended for Jeshua Anderson. Well, Kevin Lapino, is a, this is his first time starting. He's a transfer from Kansas State, and on that play, he's looking underneath, and Leon Freeman did a good job. He pulled off of the rush and actually got a hand on that ball. No huddle offense by the Cougars. We'll see the same from the Bears. Giving the Cougars starters offensively after this play. I promise we'll get them in. It is third down and eight from the 43 for Washington State. Just underway, first quarter. Cougars with the opening kick. They have it at the Baylor 43. Lopina in the shotgun with the snap. Passes over the middle. This one is caught. Brandon Gibson with the catch for a first down. He's inside the Baylor 25 at the, uh, yes, at the 23-yard line. Starters for Washington State on the offensive line. Von Lasuma at left tackle. Micah Hannum is the right tackle. Steven Ayers, Brian DeHainer is the, uh, are the guards. Kenny Alfred is the center, a junior from Gig Harbor, Washington. Devin Frischneck is the tight end. Brandon Gibson just made the catch. The Pac-10's leading receiver a year ago at a receiver. Jeshua Anderson at the other receiver. First and 10 from the 23. Handoff right side. Minimal yardage, about a three-yard gain to the 20-yard line. And let's check and see. Ball carrier was Chance Statham with another carrier for uh, Washington State. Statham with the start, obviously, in the backfield, a junior from Campbell, California. Those are the Dr. Pepper starting lineups for Washington State. Dr. Pepper, drink slow, play hard. Doctor's orders, Dr. Pepper. Second down, seven for the Cougars. They have reached the Baylor 20-yard line. Under center, handoff to Statham. Statham dances along the line, now darts forward. He'll reach the 14-yard line. Gain of about five on that carry. Joe Pavelic, Jason Lamb on the tackle for the Bears will leave Washington State third down and three from the Baylor 16-yard line. And they're keeping the tempo up, John, and on that, Staten did a good job, but Baylor has to perform on this third down and short. Key third down play right here, third down three from the 16 for Washington State. Three receivers left, two to the right side, empty, empty backfield. Lopina to throw, fires it right sideline, it is caught at the five, bumped out of bounds at the two-yard line. Jeshua Anderson, the sophomore receiver out of Woodland Hills, California, and the Cougars have first and goal at the Baylor three-yard line. Let's check in with Ricky Thompson. Uh, Chris Burke, the Baylor count corner was way off the ball that time, 10 yards deep on a third and three. That's tough, he just ran the short hitch. Easy first down pickup for the Cougars. Leaves them first and goal from the three, 12-28 and counting in the first quarter. Cougars come to the line and have to call a timeout. Timeout, Washington State, first. Timeout on the field. We will take it. 12-27 to play in the first quarter. Cougars first and goal at the Baylor three-yard line. Scoreless, Baylor and Washington State. This is Baylor, Washington State football on FSN and the Baylor ISP Sports Network. Set to resume play here at Floyd Casey Stadium in Waco, Washington State with a nice opening possession drive. They have first and goal at the Baylor three-yard line. 12.27 to go in the first quarter. Signaled back to play. Kevin Lopina under center. He'll turn, hand the ball to his fullback. Off left tackle, barreling forward. He is stopped just outside the goal line. That was uh, Laguan Mitz, a freshman tailback. 6'1", uh, 219-pounder out of Redmond, Washington. But J.J. Joe, a very nice opening drive by the visitors. Washington well, this State. game is going just like Coach Wolf wants him to. Great special teams play. Now they're on the goal line. Second and goal from the one. Quarterback keep. Did Lapina get in? No sign yet. Nope, I don't think he crossed the plane of the goal line. It'll be third down and goal for the Bears. Antonio Jones, the uh, junior linebacker out of Dallas Lincoln, in on that step. Stop for Baylor. So third down and goal from inside the one for Washington State. Key play right here. Third down and goal inside the one. 11.33 and counting in the first quarter. Lapina behind center. He'll turn. He'll give it to Staten. Staten dances his way into the end zone, but there's a flag down. Hold on. There's a flag down, Ricky Thompson thinks. Well, here's the call. Offsides. From a 50 on the defense. Touchdown. That's what Ricky Thompson thinks, that it was offsides Baylor, and it was confirmed by our referee tonight. That is uh, Roger Gaskamp, and it is a touchdown for Washington State. 
Well, that job, I mean, that drive was executed well by the Washington State offense. It really a struggle this year, but it was set up by a wonderful kick return that set them up for 45 yards going in. So not a good start for the Baylor defense. Kicker is Nico Grasso. Snap back is down. The hold is good, and the kick is on the board for Washington State. 11.27 to play in the first quarter. Cougars have drawn first blood over the Bears. It is 7-0 Washington State over Baylor. For you at BrunerAuto.com. Nice opening possession leading to a touchdown for Washington State. Cougars drive it and lead 7-0 over the Bears. 11.27 to go in the first quarter. And that was a drive that Coach Wolf I know is very, very excited about. They have a little confidence going. Uh, Kevin, I mean, Kevin Lapino, who's got, he's getting his first start at a few easy throws. Baylor really backed off, played soft, and Washington State was able to capitalize on that drive. So now Baylor has an opportunity to see if they can answer, but this game has started out exactly how the Cougars coach wants it to. Patrick Rooney to kick off for the visitors from Pullman, Washington, from left to right, into a win. Back deep, Jake Lamar, and at the goal line, it'll be David Geddes. Geddes the speedster with blockers in front of him to the 10, to the 20, into the air and down at the 22-yard line. David Geddes, the junior receiver out of Los Angeles, had an outstanding uh, run of kick returns last year, still trying to get that going this year. Give you the starters coming up. Offensively for Baylor, defensively for Washington State. Bears go right to the line of scrimmage. Robert Griffin is the starting quarterback, true freshman out of Coppers Cove, 6'3", 200-pounder. Give you the others in a moment. Griffin in the shotgun, Bears from their own 22. Griffin, pass, left flat. It is caught by Kendall Wright. Side steps one man and gets across the 25 to the 26-yard line. That is freshman to freshman right there. Uh, Robert Griffin to Kendall Wright. And the other starters for Baylor offensively. The offensive line, Jason Smith, Dan Gay, a couple of seniors at the tackles. Chris Griesen back at a guard, James Bernard at a guard. J.D. Walton, the junior from Allen by way of Arizona State, is the center. Griffin under center, turns. He'll flip it out to the right side to Kendall Wright. He is pulled down from behind. It's not going to be enough for a first down. It was a second down and five play. He got maybe a yard. So it'll be third down and four coming up for Baylor. And this is the key down. I mean, it goes without saying, but Washington State did a great job on their third downs of converting them. They only were converting 11.5% on the season. Baylor is right around 50% after last week, but this is something that Baylor has to do to make sure they stay in this football game. Ayamu with the tackle for Washington State. Key third down play here early for the Bears. Third down four. Griffin in the shotgun. Option to the left side. He'll keep. He's across the 30. He will stretch it out and get to the 35-yard line for a Baylor first down. Well, that was simply a quarterback sweep. What Coach Browse called there was fundamentally a quarterback sweep where he gives the ball to one of his best athletes, and Robert Griffin just follows a few blocks, makes a couple guys miss, and converts on a key third down. Pushed out of bounds on the near sideline by Washington State, and it is a first down for the Bears. It was uh, Kendrick Dunn out of Hearn, Texas, by way of Blend Junior College. Again, one of seven Texans on the Washington State roster who uh, will get credit for that tackle. But a first down run for Robert Griffin. First and 10 Bears from their own 35. Three receivers right, one left. Flags fly as the play begins. Fire snap, ball start. 72 on the offense. Five yard penalty, still first down. Jason Smith just a little bit, a little bit in a hurry on that play to get that play started. That was about to be a zone read where they read the defensive end and give Robert Griffin, the opportunity to give that ball to Jay Finley. Had a fantastic game last week with over 150 total yards. 30-yard line, first and 15. Five-yard penalty, first down 15 for the Bears from their own 30. 9.50 and counting in the first quarter. Bears to Kendall Wright again, right side, smelled out nicely by Washington State. Tackle was made over there on the 32-yard line by Grant, uh, Greg Trent, the senior middle linebacker. He is from Keller, Texas. And the Bears have gone to Kendall Wright, uh, Ricky Thompson, often here on this first possession tonight. Well, they have Kendall Wright as the outstanding freshman who had one call back earlier this year. But I tell you what, he is a receiver they want to get the ball to. You can look for big things out of him during this game and this year. Second down, call it 15 for the Bears. Griffin in the shotgun, pressure. Now he's going to tuck it and run to the 35, the 40, the 45. Weaves his way into Washington State territory at the 49-yard line. 
twisting, weaving run by the freshman Robert Griffin, and that's a first down for the Bears. Well, you see some of the talent that Robert has. He dropped back on that play. He was looking to his left. Ernest Smith was running either a comeback route or a curl. He was going to read it, but Robert pulls it down, makes a couple people miss, gets up the field, and picks up the first down. Quickly to the line of scrimmage, pitch in the backfield to Jeremy Sanders. He has the corner, 45, bumped out of bounds at about the 43-yard line. That's Jeremy Sanders, the junior college transfer to Baylor. He's out of Marlin High School. He comes from Navarro College, has made so far a very uh, smooth transition from quarterback to tailback, and a nice pickup of, call it six yards on that play, will leave the Bears second and four from the 44-yard line. 8.50 and counting in the first quarter. Washington State leads Baylor by a score of seven to nothing. This is Baylor's first offensive possession tonight as the clouds begin to pour into Central Texas. Griffin hands it off, tailback right up the middle, Jay Finley, the 30, the 25, the 21 yard line. What a nice hole right up the middle. Jay Finley took advantage for a 20 yard pickup. Well, the pace is up, Baylor's right back to the line of scrimmage, but that is simply one of the key plays in college football today, a little zone read inside. Jay Finley, who had a fantastic rushing day with 91 yards last week, and there goes Baylor. First down from the 22. Marcus Dawes, the tackle quickly. Baylor, Thomas White down the sideline, he dives. Did he get in? He dove for the pylon. Nope, out of bounds at the three, Ricky Thompson tells us. Well, that's the pace. The pace is up. Rock Thomas Smith, he, he comes back, he drops back for a simple wide receiver, receiver screen play, almost makes a score. And look at this, Baylor right at the line of scrimmage. Washington State nearly has a man off sides. Right up the middle for Baylor for Robert Griffin. He's at the lip of the goal line. He is just outside the goal line, inside the one. Ricky Thompson, tremendous tempo by this Baylor offense. Well, it is, and this is intentional. Washington State has barely been set. In fact, they almost had a guy in our backfield coming off their sideline when the ball was snapped. I thought they might have 12 guys on the field, but they had only 11. Here we go, second down goal from inside the one. Now here's a flag as Baylor snaps it to Robert Griffin, and he starts to move toward the goal line. Our lead referee tonight, Roger Gaskamp, will tell us. Well, after a uh, meeting, Roger Gaskamp is the referee. Wiley Willingham is the umpire. Trip Suter is the headlinesman. Keith Garmond is our line judge. The field judge is Dirk Riles. Joel Wetzel is the side judge. Linda Nixon, the back judge. The alternate is Frank LeBlanc. And uh, the replay official is David Dumas. Official still talking about it. What would you see, J.J.? Well, it looks like they may have had illegal participation. Uh, one person went to the sideline, they still had 11. I may be miscounting, but let's see what he said. Still waiting on the officials. Here's Roger Gaskamp. Could be a substitution on the defense. Half distance to the goal. Remain second down. Well, a legal substitution. <laughs> Either a guy didn't get on sides at the right time, maybe went off the wrong side, but in any case, Baylor has second down, and second down and go inside the one yard line. Very short yardage mark second off. Baylor is already inside the one. So as J.J. said, second down, less than a yard for the Baylor offense. Trying to get in the end zone, tie this game up. 7.58 to go, first quarter. Griffin under center. He'll keep it himself. He's in. Touchdown, Baylor Bears. Well, I'll tell you, I'm not sure what the Washington State coordinator was thinking on that play. They were inside the one-yard line, and the flag goes up as there's an altercation. But they were inside the one, and when you have a Robert Griffin in the game, you don't want to leave such a big gap between the tackles. And he just simply took a quarterback sneak and took it over the goal line. Well, that was easy pickings for Robert Griffin there to punch it in. Flag after the play, as J.J. said, there was a bit of an altercation. Let's see how they'll rule this. The Bears within an extra point of tying it up in the first quarter with 7.53 to go in the opening period. Nice drive by Baylor to answer the opening scoring drive by Washington State. Here again is Roger Gaskamp. Our officials have been busy here in the first half of this first quarter. After the play, personal foul. Number 58 on offense. 15 yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. So it's against Baylor. Here's the extra point kick from the freshman, Ben Parks. Not to jinx this freshman at all, but he's missed his first extra point each of the first two weeks. They've uh, had a couple of challenges in the last couple of weeks, but that's a big penalty uh, to get that penalty inside the one yard line after the touchdown. 
Snap is down, kick is away, and Parks puts it on the board. And with 7.53 to go in the first quarter, our score, Baylor 7, Washington State 7. Nice drive by the Bears to answer the Cougars. Baylor and Washington State tied at 7 with 7.53 remaining in the opening period from Waco. State Farm, our game corporate sponsor of tonight's game from Waco. Scoring by drive by Baylor answers Washington State score. We are tied at seven. Beautiful night right now in Floyd Casey Stadium in Waco. 7.53 to go in the first quarter. Baylor 7, Washington State 7. If you're enjoying our broadcast on FSN Southwest or Fox College Sports Central, it's thanks to Baylor Vision who are putting it together with our radio broadcast and making the live telecast available to you. And we appreciate you tuning in on this Friday night from Central Texas. One of the Big 12 game tonight, Kansas has taken a 10-0 lead on South Florida, matchup of the two top 20 teams in the nation, Jayhawks number 13, South Florida, coached by Jim Levitt, number 19. Penalty will force the Bears to kick off from their own 15-yard line. Parks puts everything he has into it, and it is over the head of uh, Chris Ivory. The 25, nice coverage by Baylor. Jake Lamar leading the charge there, making the tackle return out to the 27-yard line for Chris Ivory, the junior out of Longview, Texas, for Washington State. Well, that was a big mistake by Chris Ivory. He actually had got his hands on the ball at around the 15, and after the last return, you probably were expecting them to get the ball up a little further up the field, but they get it on the 27-yard line. Tim Atchison, give him credit, out of Copper's Cove, also in on that tackle. From the 27, first and 10, Washington State traveling left to right. Handoff in the backfield, off left tackle. This one is a short gain to the 29-yard line. Gain of two by Chance Staden, the junior tailback out of Campbell, California. Chance goes 5'10", 200 pounds. Two-yard gain will leave Washington State second down and eight. And Chance, this is his first time starting, but he was doing such a good job on kickoff returns, averaging about 30 yards. The coach is giving him an opportunity. Two receivers left, one to the right side. Quarterback Lapina, the snap hits him in the face mask. Baylor has recovered. He was not looking. The snap hit him in the face mask and bounced down. Let's see who got it for Baylor. Baylor jumped on that pumpkin. They've got the takeaway. Joe Pavelic with the fumble recovery for Baylor. Well, if you look at the replay, for those watching TV, I mean, the quarterback wasn't ready. Now, Kevin Lapina, this is his first start. Gary Rogers has been the quarterback, and sometimes the rhythms differ. And that ball came back. He wasn't ready for it. It hit him right in the face mask and actually took a bad bounce for Washington State and bounced back across the line of scrimmage. And there, big Joe Pa picks up the fumble. Big time takeaway by Baylor. They've got it at the Washington State 28-yard line. Griffin wants to throw, has all day in the pocket, lost it into the end zone, there's contact, there's no flag, and the ball is incomplete. Ernest Smith, the intended receiver, about five yards deep into the end zone. Tyrone Justin, the freshman cornerback, was there on pass defense for Washington State. Well, look, play action pass, and what they were looking to do, Robert Griffin was looking to go to Ernest Smith, but Washington State's defensive back did a great job of identifying the play and covering up the opportunity. 7-7 seven, seven our score, Baylor and Washington State. Ray Sims in the backfield. Finley now breaks out of the backfield to the right side in motion. Snap back to Griffin. Griffin has time, now pressured. Now trying to get away, still on his feet. Ad living. Robert Griffin runs back to the right side, gets a great block. Griffin will loft it into the end zone. It is a touchdown to Ernest Smith. It's a touchdown. How about the ad-lib ability of Robert Griffin? He hits Ernest Smith for a Baylor touchdown. Well, I'll tell you, this play did not go as long as the play Donovan McDabb did against the Cowboys back about four or five years ago. But that shows you the capability of Robert Griffin and why the Baylor coaching staff and the fans are very high on him. He came to his left. The play was broken. As you watch the replay, he goes back to his right. Ernest Smith does a great job, Ricky, of working back and giving him an opportunity. Well, he does, and that's what the Bears receivers have not been doing early is helping the quarterback out. That's a great play by receiver and quarterback. Extra point is good by uh, the freshman Ben Parks out of the hold of Derek Epperson. And the Bears turn the takeaway into seven points. A 28-yard touchdown pass from Robert Griffin to Ernest Smith 
And Baylor has taken a 14-7 lead on Washington State with 6.50 to play in the first quarter. Ernest Smith, a 6'3 junior out of New Orleans, Louisiana. And Ricky, I know you can appreciate the catch by Smith really came in the back right corner of the end zone. Well, it did, and that took great concentration. This wall down here is very close to the playing field, especially in the end zones. That took a lot of concentration to go up with his hands, and the thing he did was he kept running. Actually, Griffin sprinted to the left, ended up going back to the right. That takes a lot of patience by a quarterback and a receiver. He came left, he went back right, he threw on the run, and he threw a strike to, uh, to Ernest Smith for the Baylor touchdown. Bears have taken a 14-7 lead on these Cougars here in the first quarter. J.J., a lot of offense so far here in the first quarter. Uh, every team has, uh, well, the teams have scored on every possession except for the turnover, the fumble by Washington State. Yes, Baylor has over 100 yards already after the turnover, and Washington State's going on their first possession, so plenty of offense. Here's the kickoff by Ben Parks from right to left. It'll be taken at the two-yard line by the Cougars, Chris Ivory. Ivory to the 20, swarmed under by the Baylor defenders at the 21 and a half yard line. Somebody came out of there with the ball for Baylor, but uh, it was not a turnover. Cougars will maintain possession. It was Elliott Coffey switched to a linebacker this year that came out, there, out of there with the loose ball. Well, it'll be important here with Coach Sturdy, the offensive coordinator for Washington State. He had a really good drive, and their offense has struggled, so you don't want him to lose confidence, so he probably goes back, tries to hand the ball off a little play action pass to take the mistakes away from Kevin Lapina. From the 22, first, or from the 21, first and 10, Washington State. Ivory up the middle, gets a good surge. He's across the 25 to the 27 yard line. Six yard gain of the carry by not Ivory, but Chance Staden on the carry for, uh, for Washington State. Five yard gain, second down five for the Cougars with 6.20 to play in the first quarter. Baylor leading 14 to seven. Kevin Lapina, the junior quarterback, his first start tonight from Pleasanton, California. Takes the snap under center, back pedals. Wants to throw, lofts it right side, way overthrown, but a flag down. Wow. Was intended down the right sideline for Jeshua Anderson. And let's see if somebody maybe uh, slowed up the forward progress of the speedster, Jeshua Anderson. Looks like J Jordan Lake, it was a cornerback blitz. You had Antarius Bryant, the, cor the cornerback, from the left side, the boundary side, blitzing. And looks like Jordan got his hands on the receiver. Number 21, on the defense, cut off, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Well, it wasn't a bad call. You had a defensive blitz from the cornerback, put pressure on a young quarterback, or quarterback that, who doesn't have many starts under his belt, but he recognized it. Joshua and Jeshua Anderson did a good job of continuing on his route, and Jordan Lake, who typically isn't used to covering a wide receiver, just had his hands on him for a little bit too long. That'll give Washington State the first down on the penalty. They're out to their own 46-yard line. Officials have to halt the proceedings for a moment to get the uh, flag crew to catch up. The chain gang on the far side gives us time to pause 10 seconds for station identification. Listening on the radio on the Baylor ISP Sports Network. Downbeat from Roger Gaskamp. Here we go, back to play from their own 42-yard line. First and 10, Washington State trailing Baylor 14-7. Snap to Lapina. Hands it off, coming to the right side. Nowhere to go around the right side for uh, Dwight Tardy. Maybe his first carry of the night. Tardy, a junior out of Walnut, California. But he couldn't get to the corner. Tackle was made by Baylor's Antonio Johnson, the sophomore out of Waco High. Great play by Antonio Johnson. He fought through a couple blocks. But I'll tell you, Trey Bryant, the nose tackle, did a great job of fighting through and clogging up the inside on that play. Modest two-yard gain. Second down eight for the Cougars from their own 44. Lapina to throw. Left side overthrown. Almost. Yes, intercepted. Dwight. Dwayne Crawford with the interception for the Bears. A juggling catch on the ball that was overthrown. How about Dwayne Crawford, the senior, moved to cornerback this year with the second takeaway of the first quarter for Baylor. Well, this has been Washington State's Achilles heel. They had five turnovers in the first two games, four last week, and three of them 
have been interceptions. If you look at the replay on that play, actually Brandon Gibson, their leading receiver over 1,000 yards last year, was open. However, Kevin Lapina, who's not used to starting first real start in a college game, overthrows him, and Dwayne Crawford makes an excellent catch. Second takeaway by Baylor here in the quarter. It's 14-7 Bears as Robert Griffin leads the offense back onto the field. Griffin hands it to the tailback. No, he kept it. Right side, 40, 45, 50. Tripped up at the 50-yard line. Wow, what a fake by the freshman, the magician at quarterback, Robert Griffin. Well, I'll tell you, I mean, this is the benefit from having a good athlete. I'm sorry, good, a very good athlete at quarterback because all of a sudden Jay Finley's running well. Then you have this kid fakes it to Jay, and he takes out for a 20-yard game. Bears right at midfield, first and 10, 5-11, 5-10, 5-09 to play in the first quarter from Floyd Casey Stadium. Game moved to a Friday night to uh, try to get it in ahead of Hurricane Ike. First and 10 from the 50. Griffin does hand it off this time to Jay Finley. He is stopped in the center of the line, maybe a yard to the 49, one step into Washington State territory. 4.45 to go in the opening quarter. I tell you, a lot has happened in this opening uh, 15 minutes of play. Really has. Been a fast-moving quarter. Had two turnovers, two touchdowns. I mean, it's been an exciting first quarter. Second down nine for the Bears from the Cougars' 49-yard line. Four, three look defensively for Washington State. Snap back to Griffin in the shotgun. Has time. Flings it right side. Incomplete. Boy, in and out of the hands of Kendall Wright. And thanks in large part to the uh, big hit by Chima Chakua. Boy, I hope that's right. Bob Robertson told me the pronunciation there, and I hope I got it close. Sophomore out of Allen, so he's a home state guy, but he delivered a blow opposite uh, into the back of Kendall Wright to make sure that was an incomplete. Well, I'm, I'm thinking, John, I talked to him, and I think it's watch a cool. Say it again. Watch a cool. I'm going with it's it. It's something close to that, but that was a good hit. He actually read the play action fake, came back to the middle, put a big hit on Kendall Wright, third down and nine. <laughs> third down and nine from the 49. Griffin option to the left side. Keeps and tackle. No gain on the play on third down and nine. The tackle was made by Greg Trent, the middle linebacker, the senior out of Keller. Will force a fourth down coming up for the Bears. In fact, fourth down and nine from the 49. Well, that's just a fantastic read by Greg Trent from right up the street, not too far from where I live in Keller. He did a good job of working inside out. That was just a simple speed option to the left, and Robert really didn't have any opportunity to pitch the ball. Baylor has to punt. Chance Staten back to receive the expected punt of Baylor's Derek Epperson. Good snap back to Epperson. Moderate pressure. He gets the punt away. Nice high punt. Staten will back away. He's going to go out of bounds. We'll see where they spot it. Came out of bounds on the left sideline. At the 10-yard line is where it was settled. And that's where Washington State will take over on offense. Trailing Baylor 14-7. 3.36 to go in the first quarter from Floyd Casey Stadium in Waco where the young fans are enjoying this 14-7 Baylor lead. Well, the first quarter, you say it's been full of offense as Washington State comes back out. Baylor has 129 yards on, on 16 plays, and that was the first punt. They've really taken advantage of mistakes by Washington State. Kevin Lapina leads the team back on the field, and they have to protect the ball to stay in this game. Lapina, the quarterback, junior, 6'3", 228-pounder out of Pleasanton, California, in the shotgun, and as the snap... Uh, it's made back to Lapina. A false start will be the call. Fire snap. False start. 79 on the offense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. And on that, John, like I mentioned, Kevin, this is his first game starting. Gary Rogers started the previous two games. Quarterbacks have different cadences. And when you have a different cadence, the linemen have to get used to it. It's something as simple as how long did you pause before you say hut. And that affects the linemen. Lapina will opt to go under center on this play. First down 15 from the five. Traveling left to right in the first quarter, which has for three minutes, 36 seconds remaining. Lapina fakes the handoff, rolls right, dumps it off into the right flat, across the 10, out to the 12, 13-yard line. Tackle made by Baylor's Antonio Johnson of the tight end, Ben Woodard, a senior out of Cheney, Washington. So a gain of eight out to the 13-yard line. It was a first and 15 play, so it'll be second down. Second down and five. Looks like more than five for Washington State. 
It's actually second down and seven coming up for the Cougars. Under center, Kevin Lapina, double tight end set. He will hand the ball off. Not much doing off the left side. Trey Bryant with the tackle for the Bears. Trey Bryant leading that charge in the off uh, defensive line for Baylor. There's big Trey coming off the field. And Baylor's run defense, J.J. Joe, has been really solid through the first two games this year. It really has. And on that one, Trey Bryant really fought across the face of the center. Kenny Alford was a returning starter and made that play. Now you have Washington State and a young quarterback in a third and eight. Three receivers right, two to the left side for the Cougars. Lapina, the quarterback, brings a man in motion from the left side on third down and seven. Lapina over the middle. He's got Brandon Gibson. Gibson has the first down. He stretches the ball out to the 35. It popped out. Jake Lamar covered it, but Gibson was down. And there is the leading receiver in the Pac-10 conference a year ago. Brandon Gibson had 1,180 yards last season. And as you look at that replay, Brandon Gibson, their leading receiver. You don't want to lose track of that guy. He has, he's the leading receiver on the season. He comes from the inside slot on the right side, up the seam between two, two defenders and makes the catch. Third down and seven, they pick up 20. Now first and 10 from the 34 for Washington State. And off to Tardy. Tardy is stacked up at the 35-yard line. Sam Sledge is in there at a defensive tackle position, getting up off the bottom of the pound, uh, bottom of that pile for Baylor. Justin Lamb is in there as well. Trey Bryant, a one-yard gain, second down and nine for Washington State from their own 35. Now with a minute 33 to play in the first quarter. And one thing I know Coach Norwood is upset about is third down conversions. Last week, Baylor even allowed Northwestern State to have about 50%. And today, Washington State is four of four. This is second down and nine for the Cougars from their own 34. Snap back to Lapina. He's going to keep it himself. Right side hit hard as he crosses the 35 out to the 38-yard line. Boy, he took a couple of pretty hard shots there, did Kevin Lapina. Not bad yardage out to the 30, let's see, 38-yard line is where they spot it. A three-yard gain on that play will leave Washington State third down and seven. Well, it's third down and seven, and the guy I would look for, is two people I would look for, is the tight end, Mr. Woodard, at number 48, and Brandon Gibson. Those are the people he's very comfortable with, and this is the down Coach Norwood wants Baylor to execute on. Woodard tied on the right side, Gibson in a slot on the left side. Third down, closer to six for Washington State from their own 37-yard line. Crowd making noise. Lapina wants to throw. Left side, it is complete at the 45. Spins out of a tackle and down at the 50-yard line. It was not Gibson on the receiving end, but rather the outside receiver on that side, Jeshua Anderson. And the sophomore makes a big catch for a first down completion for Washington State. Well, what, Mr. what the quarterback did there, he did a great job of actually throwing the ball to where the blitz was coming from. Baylor was bringing a hot blitz from the outside, from the outside right side on the left side of the offense. He read it, Jeshua Anderson, one-on-one -on -one coverage, makes the play. First and 10, Washington State from their own 49-yard line, trailing Baylor 14 to seven. Maybe the final play of the first quarter right here, 10 seconds to go. Snap back to Lapina, he'll hand it off. Right into the left side, Chance Staten gets behind his blockers nicely and is spilled at the Baylor 41-yard line with one second to go in the first quarter after they spot the ball. They will mark that off, and that is going to be right at the first down marker. And Terrius Bryan with the tackle for Baylor. And there is the final second of the first quarter. We played 15 minutes here in Waco. An entertaining first quarter, Washington State and Baylor. At the end of the first quarter, it's Baylor 14, Washington State 7 on FSN. And set to begin the second quarter of play from here in Waco. Switch ends, Cougars travel right to left. Here's the first and 10 play from the 41-yard line. Nice play in the defensive front by Baylor. Hand off to Dwight Tardy, and he is stacked up. No gain on the play. In fact, a loss of a yard. It'll be uh, second down and 12, really two yards. Second down and 12 coming up. Well, Baylor really need that. Trey Bryant uh, was on the, on the previous series, made a big play. He came in, broke through across the face of Kenny Alford again and makes a big stop. Second down and 12 for Washington State. Trey Bryant, we've called his name quite a bit here in the first half. Just underway, second quarter. Bears lead 14 to seven. Kevin Lapina remains at quarterback. He's in the shotgun. Moves the receiver over to the right side. Now he's gonna have to call a timeout. Timeout. 
Washington State. Cougars trying to get settled in there, couldn't do so. They have to burn a timeout with 14-18 to play in the second quarter. Bears on top, 14-7 to of over Washington State. Next action for the Bears will be next Friday night. Back-to-back -back Friday night games for the Bears will be in Hartford, Connecticut, as Baylor takes on the Yukon Huskies next Friday night. 6.30 for the pregame show, 7 o'clock kickoff central time for Baylor and UConn this upcoming Friday night. Well, that'll be a big game, John, next week, but I know Coach Browse, he has his hands full tonight. Absolutely. And uh, they, I know he's really wanting his defense to step up his performance here and get this offense off the field. It's second and 12. Kevin Lapina comes up, had a lineup issue. Daniel Blackledge kind of lost. Leaves Washington State only one timeout remaining in this first quarter or first half. We're back to play. Lapina in an empty backfield. Three receivers right, one left. Maybe motion by the Cougars. Lapina now is scrambling. There's a flag down to the right side to the 40, to the 35, where Jeremy Williams finishes him off at the 35-yard line. Flag lying on the field back at the 50. We'll check the yellow hanky lying on the field. And that, that flag is in the position where they typically call holding. I'm not saying that's what he's calling, but you see the Washington State offense walking backwards. That's not a good sign for Coach Wolf, but a good sign for Coach Bryles. Roger Gaskamp, our Big 12 referee, will tell us. Open, number 55, on the offense, 10-yard penalty, repeat second down. JJ, you pegged it. It was in the vicinity of holding, and it was holding. And that's the tackle. That's Von Lasuma. I mean, he's one of the key tackles, one of the key protectors from a returning starter. And he just had a handful of Mr. Lamb, Jason Lamb, one of the ones I was watching at the beginning of the game. Can we put pressure on that quarterback from our front four? How about second down 22 for the Cougars? Now back in their own territory at their own 47-yard line. Second Lapina, empty backfield, three receivers right, two to the left side. Second and a bunch, second and 22 for Washington State. Lapina to throw over the middle. It is intercepted by Joe Pavelic. Return to the 45 and bumped down at the 47-yard line. Joe Pa with a fumble recover earlier, and now an interception all coming in the first half. Well, Ricky, on that play, it looks like Washington State was trying to go to the well too many times. Similar play, and Joe, Joe Pavelic makes the play across the middle. Well, they were. They were trying to go in the middle of the field where they've had success on third down. Pavelic had a perfect drop position. He also made a pretty good catch, guys. He went up and got that one. That was almost reminiscent of that interception at the goal line when Baylor beat Colorado two years ago. A leaping grab by Joe Pavelic. Bears have their third takeaway here in the first half. Robert Griffin, the quarterback, Bears offense back on the field. He'll hand it to Ray Sims, running laterally down the line. Ball's loose, covered by Baylor. I say that, I think the uh, center, J.D. Walton, got on top of it for the Bears. But a dangerous uh, fumble of the ball by Ray Sims. J.D. Walton saved his bacon by recovering the loose ball. Well, that was a good play by the Washington State defender. Actually come across, came across the defender on that trap play, and it was a really different play. I have seen that one in a while. And J.D. Walton doing what he's supposed to do as a leader of the offense. Bears actually picked up about four yards on that play. Second and six. Griffin hit as he throws. Pass is complete to David Gaddis at the 40 at the 39-yard line. And Griffin is hurt. Robert Griffin is stunned after that hit on the play. He is very slow and very wobbly as he comes to the Baylor sideline. Pass was complete. In fact, right on the money to David Gaddis for a pickup into Cougars territory at the 39-yard line. Griffin will... Uh, Shake the cobwebs out, J.J., and come right back onto the field. Well, just a little zone read play as a play-action pass out of that shotgun formation. And Robert Griffin did a good job focusing downfield, but that's welcome to Division I football type of hit there. But he made the throw. David Geddes makes the catch. Big-time hit. First down for the Bears. Handoff, Jacoby Jones. Jones off left tackle. He is ridden down to the ground by the weak side linebacker, Kendrick Dunn. Dunn, part of that Texas connection out of Hearn High School and Bland Junior College. A gain of a yard at the most will leave Baylor second and nine at the Cougars, 38. With 12.15 to go from Floyd Casey Stadium in Waco, Friday night football. The game moved from tomorrow because of the impending approach of Hurricane Ike. Nice night, wind uh, not as strong now as it was earlier this evening. Here's second and nine for the Bears. Griffin in the shotgun. Hit as he throws. Fires a laser. Kendall Wright, did he get it? No, I don't think so. He dove at the 35, 
but no catch, says the line judge. And that'll leave the Bears second down or third down and nine. Well, this is Coach Brown's offense at its finest. You have a lot of sprint actions, roll out, and really quick throws. And on that play, it was a right read by the quarterback, but Washington State's defender did a good job of picking up the quick pass, and Kendall Wright just couldn't hold on that, leaving a third down and nine. Third down situation for the Bears, up 14 to seven on Washington State. It's third and nine from the Cougars, 38. Griffin, empty backfield over the middle. Justin Akers has the catch, no catch. Ball was knocked loose. Nice hit right after the catch, right after the ball arrived. All right, help me, JJ. That's Chima Wachakwu. Wachakwu, gotcha. Chima Wachakwu, and it looks like Coach Bryles, which he is apt to do, will go for it, at least give the semblance as he go, goes for the ball. But that was just a little delayed release by the tight end who got picked up by Chima Wachakwu, who made a great play on Justin Aker. He's made a couple of big hits here in the first half. That one prevented what would have been a first down catch by Justin Akers. Leaves the Bears fourth down and nine, and the Bears go to the line ostensibly to go for it here on fourth down and nine. And about to be caught by the play clock. Baylor's gonna have to call a timeout. Timeout, Baylor. Timeout Bears, 11.52 to go in the second quarter. Bears up 14 to seven. Wellness everywhere. John Morris, J.J. Joe, Ricky Thompson, our Baylor ISP network from Waco. Glad to have you tuning in on FSN this evening in Fox College Sports Central. Baylor Vision, Baylor Radio uh, crew going together to make this uh, television possible this evening and we're glad you're with us wherever you might be listening and watching. Also on the web at BaylorBears.com, the official website for Baylor Athletics. All right, timeout has expired. Bears still go to the line of scrimmage. Fourth down and nine, the situation from the Washington State 38. Bears leading 14 to seven. Griffin with the snap. Watch out, pressured and sacked back at the 46-yard line. A charging linebacker came in on, uh, actually the defensive end, Matt Mullenix, came in on Robert Griffin. He had nowhere to hide, and Mullenix, with a sixth year of eligibility, taking advantage of it, gets the sack, and on downs, the Cougars take over at their own 46-yard line. Well, it looks like the Washington State defensive coordinator caught a little stun on that one and brought Mullenix, who's a nice-sized defensive end from the outside inside, and Robert Griffin had no, no chance to really get rid of that ball prior to Mullenix making the sack. So the Cougars take over their offense at their own 46, trailing 14-7, to 11.44 to go, second quarter. Handoff right up the middle, nice burst right up the middle, and that is Dwight Tardy with the carry. Tardia Jr. out of Walnut, California, coming in tonight. They're leading a ball carrier, 32 carries for 79 yards. Did you notice in the stats, Washington State had only two rushing touchdowns through their first two games this year? Well, they've only scored about, I think, 16 points uh, in two well, games. That's true. So Good point. They, they, they really struggled offensively, but they're producing tonight. Seven yard gain, second down and three for the Cougars. Tardy hit hard. Oh, and popped back by Joe Pavelic. Wow, what a hit by the junior linebacker for the Bears. Well, Joe Pavelic is really making a mark here in this first half. He has a fumble recovery, an interception, and that was a big time hit as Mr. Tardy came through the line of scrimmage. He saw 41, but now what you have is a third down and three, and Baylor has allowed five of five conversions on third down. Earl Patin in at linebacker for the Bears out of Louisiana. Joe Pa is in there. Here's third down and three for the Cougars. From the Baylor, 48. Lapina wants to throw over the middle. It is complete, but I think short of the first down marker. Nice coverage by Baylor. Yeah, he's tackled at the 45-yard line, so it'll be uh, short of the first down marker. Fourth down coming up. Well, I wouldn't be surprised the way Washington State has moved the ball to see Coach Wolf go for this, but that was a good defensive play on third down, and that's one of the few times Baylor has stopped it. But we see a, a new package coming in for Coach Wolf, and it looks like they will be going for it on fourth down. Wholesale changes in, three subs out, three in for Washington State. Elliott Coffey is in at the linebacker for the Bears. Here it is, they will go for it, fourth and short from the Baylor 45. Stack offense, hand it off, first down and more for Dwight Tardy off the right side. He gets all the way inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. So that's just simply sm smash mouth football. And Washington State has run the ball effectively this evening. Chance Staten has 24 yards 
Dwight Tardy, if you add that to it, he probably has about close to 17, 20 yards right now, but they moved the ball effectively, picked up the first down, and they're threatening inside Baylor territory. Cougars needed a yard. They got about six on that play. So first and 10, Washington State from the Baylor 39 with 9.35 to go in the, in the second quarter. Lapina under center, gives to his lone tailback, coming to the right side, and Tarius Bryan pushes him out of bounds. Carried by Chris Ivory, the junior from Longview High School in Longview, Texas. And a gain of two yards to the 37 will leave the Cougars second down and eight. I know I may be stating the obvious here, but here's a big drive. You're in the middle of the second quarter, actually going to, to the middle of the second quarter. Washington State is threatening. Whatever happens, if Washington State is successful, they get that renewed confidence. If Baylor's successful, they probably have an opportunity to stack on another score. Stations give you a chance to identify yourselves following this next play. The second down and eight play for the Cougars from the Baylor 37. Washington State traveling from right to left. Lapina in the shotgun, has the snap. Flushed out of the pocket. He rolls to the left side. Now he's going to run for it. Justin Lamb chasing. Can't catch him to the 30, the 20, and out of bounds at the 15. There's a flag. There's another flag at the end of the play. But quite a run by the quarterback, Kevin Lapina. Well, Kevin Lapina is a good athlete. John, that's right where a block. Jeshua Anderson looks like he's blocking Dwayne Crawford, or I believe that was our safety, Jeremy Williams. One of them he's blocking. It looks like he may have grabbed the hold of his jersey. Let's see. But Mr. Gas can't say it. Holding. Number 85. On the offense. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Result of play. Still first down. Wow. So they get the play, mark off 10 yards from the uh, end of the play. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification along the Baylor ISP Sports Network. Patan in at linebacker for the Bears. It is first and 10, Washington State from the Baylor 26. Lapina under center, fakes the handoff, wants to throw. Throws right side, it's caught by Brandon Gibson. He is pulled out of bounds by Antarius Bryan. A flag down in the Cougars' backfield. J.J., I'm going to say that's in the vicinity of a late hit or roughing the passer. And I would agree, John. That was a, a good play by the... Well, it could be holding. I mean, it's back there. It looks like the quarterback went down late as you look at it, and it's either going to be holding or late hit. And the referee was right there looking at it, so it's hard to fool that guy. Here's Roger Gaskamp, our lead referee. Rough for the pass. Number nine on the defense. Penalty will be added on to the end of the run. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. Well, that's a big penalty there. That uh, puts them inside the 10-yard line. Now they have first and goal to go from about the eight-and-a-half-yard line. But it looks like it was a little late hit there. Got to the quarterback a little late. And a lot of times when those linemen get there late, John, they want to hit somebody, and not, they don't want to hold up. Jamie and Hardeman, the sophomore defensive end out of Dallas. To Kimball High School, whistled for that foul. Gives Washington State first and goal at the eight-yard line. Lapina in the shotgun. He'll keep the ball, coming to the left side and take it into the end zone. Touchdown, Washington State. Kevin Lapina, an eight-yard touchdown run. And the Cougars are an extra point away from tying this game at 14-all. Well, that looks like the staple play in college football now. You put a quarterback in shotgun. He just fakes it to the tailback. As you see it there on the replay, and he outruns the defensive end, beats the safeties and corners, and they tie up or pending the extra point, even up this game. Nico Grasso is the kicker, a sophomore from Encino, California. Going for the extra point that will tie it with exactly eight minutes to play in the second quarter. Snap back is down, the hold is good, and the kick is on the board for Washington State. Exactly eight minutes to go in the second quarter from Waco. Our new score, Baylor 14, Washington State. Scoring drive by Washington State has tied this game. Eight minutes to go in the second quarter from Floyd Casey Stadium in Waco. Just off the campus of Baylor University. We're tied at 14, Baylor and Washington State. KJ, how about an update on the uh, stats here midway through the second quarter? Well, since Washington State just got off offense, I mean, let's talk about them. They have 160 yards on 32 total plays. And if you're Coach Wolf, you're happy because you have three turnovers in the first half. 
and you still a tie. 72 yards rushing, 86 yards passing, so you have a great balance going on. And now you're in a position to pull out, pull out a game, or at least be in the game going into the second half. Patrick Rooney set to kick off for the Cougars. He'll kick it from right to left. Bears have Jake Lamar in the speedster. David Geddes back deep. Rooney approaches the ball, kicks it from right to left. Line drive kick. Geddes will take it at the goal line. Center of the field to the 10, the 15, the 20, the 25 on his feet out to the 30-yard line. Nice return by David Geddes out to the 30-yard line. 7.53 to go in this second quarter, and the Bears will take over at the 30-yard line. Well, we'll see what kind of adjustments Coach, Coach Browse has made. It looks like Washington State, as Ricky was mentioning as we were talking, they've got the bead on us, kind of figured us out. And Coach, Coach Browse has to mix up his offense to see if they can start moving the ball against this Washington State defense. All right, Bears had the momentum when they scored on two straight possessions. Now they've seen the Cougars come back to tie it. From the 30, handoff Jay Finley. No, Griffin keeps right side, 40, 50, down the right sideline, cuts back at the 40, the 30, the speedster Griffin to the 20, and down inside the 15-yard line. Well, just like that, when you have a guy that runs the hurdles under 50, uh, I'll tell you what, he really did a good job of making the fake inside. As you watch the replay, he outruns the defensive end, and then it's off to the races, and Washington State's defensive back backfield did a good job of actually chasing him down and making a play to keep him out of the end zone. Here are the Bears right back, and they pitch it to Jeremy Sanders. Sanders in for the Baylor touchdown as they keep the tempo going, and Jeremy Sanders is in the end zone for the Bears. Well, Ricky, I'm not sure that went really quickly, but it looks like all of a sudden we think Washington State has a bead on the Baylor offense, and in two plays, the Bears score. Well, that's right, and they went back to that running game there where they brought it outside early with Griffin. They've had a hard time covering that all night long, and you come back to Sanders on a quick snap, J.J., really snapped that thing quick. 57 yards on the run by Griffin. Jeremy Sanders punches it in from there. Extra point is good by Ben Parks. Timeout. Bears strike quickly on that possession. Great run by Robert Griffin of 57 yards. Sets up the touchdown run of, help me, was that 13 yards by Jeremy Sanders? That's about right. I was right, about right, right about we'll 13 check exactly. yards. We'll but, check that. Uh, but, but that was a really quick strike by the Baylor offense. Jeremy Sanders, two carries on the night, now 18 yards, a touchdown for the Bears. Guy that call, they call J-Mo, Jeremy Sanders. J-Mo. And gives the Bears a 21-14 lead. Kick by Baylor is away, short kick. Fair catch called for and taken at the 23-yard line. One of the upbacks takes the, takes the kick by uh, Baylor. Tony Thompson took the kickoff. And the short kick will give the ball to Washington State at their own 24-yard line. Baylor leads 21. The Wrangler Pro Rodeo Tour Area Playoffs. Professional rodeos postseason continues. The world's toughest cowboys knock hands over 14 grueling weeks for a shot at the championship crown and a share of a $1.6 million purse. Who will answer the bell? The Wrangler Pro Rodeo Tour area playoffs continue Thursday. Take a journey back in time as baseball's grand old ballparks and magical Octobers come alive again. Baseball's golden age. See legendary heroes like Gehrig, Mantle, Robinson, and DiMaggio in a rare collection of footage that brings America's pastime to life like never before. It's an all new episode, The Shoulders of Giants, Sunday. and Fox College Sports Central tonight coming to you from Waco, Texas. Cougars take over now. It is first and 10 from their own 24-yard line. Seven minutes, 32 seconds to go. We are almost exactly halfway through this second period. A lot of offense in this game, which has not been the norm in recent games between Baylor and Washington State. Last time these two teams played, two years ago in Seattle, it was a 17-15 final. Cougars winning. 
Prior to that, 94 Alamo Bowl, a 10-3 Cougars win over the Bears. It's 21-14, first half. Cougars ball from their 24, first and 10. Lapino airs it out, right side, going deep, incomplete. Trying to hit the speedster, Jeshua Anderson. Nice coverage by Baylor, and the ball, Chris Burke on defense. And the ball was simply overthrown by Lapina. Well, that was excellent coverage by Chris Burke. Uh, that was a simple go pattern by Jeshua Anderson, who is a very fast receiver, young. He averaged 30, 30 yards a catch last season. Kevin Lapina put the air under it, but Chris Burke did an excellent job of kind of cutting off the receiver, not allowing him to get to that fade pattern. Leaves Washington State, second down and 10 from their own 24. Traveling right to left. Wind is uh, really picked up here in the last couple of minutes. Lapina. Hands the ball off. Ooh, may have been a face mask in there. There's no call. Handed the ball off to Chance Staden. And let's see, they'll spot it right at the 24, so really no gain on that play. Third down and 10 coming up for the Cougars from their own 24. Well, we talked about how quickly Baylor answered, and you say, well, the defense has to go back right out there. But I'll tell you, when you're an offensive player and you score after a long drive and you got to come right back out, that can be kind of discouraging as well. But a big third down and 10 here. Chris Francis in at linebacker for the Bears. Earl Patin is in there as well. Here's third down and 10 for Washington State from their own 24. Three seconds on the play clock. Two, now one. Now I think it might have caught him, but no flag. Here's Lapina wants to throw. Throws over the middle. Leaping. Gibson incomplete. He overthrew him. Gibson had a little opening at about the Baylor 47-yard line. Pass was too tall. It'll be fourth down and 10. Coming up for the Washington State Cougars. Well, I'll tell you on that one, that Kevin Lapina did a good job of leaking out as you watch the rebate to his left. He didn't see it, and he gave Mr. Gibson a lot of time to get to the middle, but what he did is left it just a little high, and Baylor did a good job of covering it up, and now Washington State has to punt giving Baylor an opportunity a good foot position. First punt of the night by Reed Forrest, the sophomore from uh, Euphrata, Washington. Had a 58-yarder last week against Cal. This one is away. It's taken by Joe Bennett at the 38 to the 40. Still fighting for yardage. He'll get to about the 42-yard line, and that is it. So the Bears will take over at their own 42-yard line. That's three and out uh, for Washington State. Maybe the first time tonight. That has been the first three now. Now they had a couple turnovers, turnovers and interception right, right. and then a fumble. That the fumble I think was after two plays. But that was the first three and out. So that was a good answer after Baylor came back. Robert Griffin with the 57-yard run. Jeremy Sanders 13-yard touchdown score. Baylor defense does its job. Now Baylor has good field position for an opportunity at another score. Bears right back on the field. Brad Taylor in moves from right to left in a slot on the left side. Griffin takes the snap, gives to Jay Finley. Finley burrows his way out to the 45-yard line. Three-yard pickup on the play. Second and seven coming up for the Bears, who lead 21-14 over Washington State. Six minutes, five seconds to play in the second quarter from Waco. Ricky Thompson will catch up with Coach Art Bryles going in at halftime. Ricky has to have his running shoes on to catch up with Coach Bryles. That man moves fast. Second down, seven for the Bears. Three receivers left, one to the right side. They'll keep it on the ground to Finley up the middle to the 50 and into Cougars territory at the 46. Well, our Coach Browse is going back to something that worked really well last week. He's going back to giving that ball between the tackles. You watch the replay, little zone read, and Jay Finley does a good job of leaping over a player, picking up the necessary yardage for the first down. First down and 10 from the 40. Six yard line. Saw James Bernard, the right side tackle, the junior out of Overland Park, Kansas, with a nice block in there. First and ten, Bears. Griffin airs it out, right side, going deep. David Geddes looks up, can't quite make the catch at the goal line. Defended very well by uh, Washington State. Let's check and see who that defensive back was. Ricky Thompson, how did you see that one? Well, that was a good play by the Washington State cornerback. He got there just as the ball did. It was a good throw by Griffin. Good route by Gaddis, but that was just a good play by a defensive back right at the goal line. Romeo Pelham was the cornerback, sophomore from Long Beach, California. And a well-thrown ball, J.J. That was right on the money for uh, the intended receiver, David Gaddis. Leaves the Bears. Second down and 10 from the Cougars, 46. Griffin to Finley, big hole up the middle, 40. 30 to the 20, angles back to the center of the field, 10-5, touchdown, Jay Finley. Well, I'll tell you what, John, when you go back to the running game, 
The game is won between the tackles. And, and that's what Coach Brown says. We need to be physical. He mentioned it early on in camp about the defensive line. And, then, and, the, and he also mentioned about those big boys, you know, the, the ones up front, J.D. Walton and all the rest, Dan Gay, all those guys. And you'll see on that a little zone read play. And there goes Jay Finley on the replay. And he just outruns the linebackers in the secondary. 46-yard scamper by Jay Finley. Here's the extra point kick, and it is good by Ben Parks out of the hold of Derek Epperson. Big plays have really uh, highlighted the second quarter for the Bears. There was a 57-yard run by quarterback Robert Griffin. That set up a touchdown run by Jeremy Sanders. Now a 46-yard run by Jay Finley into the end zone and the Bears lead Washington State 28-14. Well, that was just a great read. As you look at Jay Finley's stats there, five carries, 81 yards, 16.2 yards, and a score. And he's building on a great game against Northwestern State last week. So Jay Finley, who had a few challenges holding on to the ball last season, really has grown up and come into his own early here in the season. Coach Browns, as you see there, is very excited that they're running the ball as well as they are. And Baylor has an opportunity now to really try to put the hammer down on the Cougars. 28-14 the score, still 5-12 to go in this second quarter. John Morris, J.J. Joe, Ricky Thompson coming to you from Floyd Casey Stadium in Waco. Glad you're with us on this Friday night. And again, our apologies for stepping into the hallowed ground of Texas high school football on a Friday night. Wouldn't have done it except for a hurricane headed to the <laughs> Texas Gulf Coast. Hey, well, I won't mind if we get a win. Maybe we can do it again next week. Let's do it next Friday. <laughs> Here's the kick by Ben Parks from left to right. End over end kick. It'll be taken at the 15-yard line by Chance Staten. Staten to the center of the field, 25 out to the 28-yard line and pushed down there. Cougars offense comes back on the field, trailing Baylor by a score of 28-14. Somebody ran out of their shoe on the field. Five minutes, six seconds to play in the second quarter. J.J. had a thrill earlier today trying to look for ties to Washington State. Right. Washington State alum is one guy named Keith Jackson. Keith Jackson. Retired from ABC yes. Sports. Uh, Coach Taft hooked me up with an interview with Keith Jackson. Well, he's a he's a man. He's a stalwart. Oh, living legend. Closing yes, in on 80 years old. Retired a couple of years. But great to visit with that uh, Washington State alum. Back to play from the 29, first and 10. Staten with the carry to the right side, trying to get to the corner. He can't get there. Great lateral pursuit down the line by the Bears. They push him out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Chris Burke, Earl Patan, and uh, teammates for Baylor keep it to a gain of only one, second and nine coming up. Well, that was just great defense. Earl Patan, he won't get credit, but what he'll do is he really extended that play outside. He made them fight outside and finally got in on the tackle. Now Washington State with second and nine. Patan, Pavelic, and Antonio Johnson, the linebackers for the Bears. That's a talented group. Second down and nine, Lapina in the shotgun. He's pressured. He is running for his life, and Baylor got him. Vincent Rhodes, the senior out of Denison High School, gets the sack of quarterback Kevin Lapina. I'll tell you, Trey Bryant, Vincent Rhodes are really battling inside. I'm not sure what Coach Norwood is telling them, but they've really been active. As you watch the replay, Kevin Lapina has time. He's looking, he's looking. He has to leak right in before he's able to get out of the way. Here comes big Vincent Rhodes. And now you have a young team in a third and 13 with 3.50 to go before the half. Ball is spotted back at the 26-yard line, so it is third down 13 for Washington State. Two receivers left, and in a slot to the right side. One back in the backfield. Lapina moving pocket to the left side. Wants to throw, throws across his body. It is caught by Jeshua Anderson out to the 35. He runs forward to the 40, and that's going to be enough for a first down by about a yard. Well, that was a perfect play for Coach Wolf. I mean, they rolled the coverage and the blocking scheme into the blitz. Baylor was bringing Jeremy Williams a little late on the blitz. They rolled into him. He had two linemen in front of him. Had enough time. Jeshua Anderson did a good job settling into the zone as you watch the replay. And he just worked into that hole. Hooked the hole is what we call it. And he picked up a quality first down. Needed 13. They got 14. First down, Washington State at their own 40. 3.15 to go before halftime. Baylor leads the Cougars 28-14. Lapina from the shotgun will take the snap. He's pressured again. Rolls left, throws, center of the field, diving attempt at the interception. No by Jordan Lake, but Lake was the closest to it. 
The pass was intended for Brandon Gibson. I'll tell you, Kevin Lapina, one thing the Baylor lineman will learn is this kid is mobile. He will get out of the pocket. On that, you see as he leaks out to the left, they miss him and dive, and he makes a probably ill-advised throw trying to find Brandon Gibson. I would look for him as well because he's a very good receiver, but almost got an interception by Brandon Lake. Lake was upset. He didn't make the catch. Yeah, it is second down and 10 for Washington State from their own 40. Lapina, three receivers right, throws right. Ball is caught at the 45-yard line. Bears having hemmed in pretty well. It'll be an eight-yard pickup on the completion to Daniel Blackledge, his first catch tonight. Blackledge, 6'1", 178-pound sophomore out of Colorado Springs, Colorado. And an eight-yard gain will leave the Cougars third down and two from their own 48. John, guess uh, what the conversion percentage is for Washington State. Uh, it's, pretty it's pretty high. It's Six they, of eight. Is that right? Six of eight. Because they were five for their first five. Exactly. Right? So this is third down and two for the Cougars, who have feasted on third down opportunities tonight. Lapina from the shotgun. They've completed another one. Pass over the middle. This is uh, caught by Michael Willis. Converted safety makes the catch sliding to the ground. First down to the Baylor 42-yard line. First and 10 Cougars. They are now seven of nine on third down opportunities tonight. Well, Kevin Lapina just patiently waits, and he likes the middle. Quarterbacks who haven't played a lot like the middle of the field because they're very easy throws if it's open. First and 10, Washington State from the Baylor 42. Crossing route. Pass is caught over the middle. This is Daniel Blackledge again. And the Bears get him on the ground pretty quickly. They'll give him forward progress to the 30, yep, 39-yard line. So a gain of three on that play. Second and seven coming up for the Cougars. Nicholas Jean-Baptiste comes out on the defensive line as Trey Bryant is back in. Second down seven for Washington State. Staff to Lapina in the shotgun, rolling to the right side, pressure, sack from behind. Leon Freeman got to him from behind. That's another sack for the Bears. Will push the Cougars back outside the Baylor 45. Well, that's my target restoration player, player watching the game. I mean, he leaks out to the left, and here comes Leon Freeman with a big time hit. Well, Kevin Lapina gets in trouble is when he stares down Brandon Gibson. If I'm the defensive back coach for Baylor, I say, watch Brandon Gibson. When he stares him down, that's when he gets in trouble. Third down, 14 for the Cougars. Minute three to go before halftime. Bears up 28-14. Lapina on third down, wants to throw. Sideline route is incomplete. Drilled one of the coaches on that sideline. Pass was intended for Ben Woodard. It was incomplete, and it's fourth down. So the Cougars, uh, for only the third time in 10 opportunities tonight, fail to convert on third down, and that'll bring up fourth down and 13. You would think a punting situation with 55 seconds to go in the half. That, that's what you're thinking. They're lined up for the punt now, and the smart thing here for, for Joe Bennett, you're up 28-14. If there's any question on this punt, you just get away, get your players away, and let the ball roll dead uh, to stay away from a, a bad play. Bears run Vincent Rhodes in there late in the defensive line. Good snap back to the punter. Punt is away. He doesn't go for the corner. It bounces at the six-yard line. Ooh, and is downed inside the one. Great coverage by Washington State. That punt downed inside the one-yard line. But hang on. Let's see if one of the officials... Hang on, let's see if they're gonna get that great spot inside the one yard line with 45 seconds to go before halftime. Official's gonna talk about it. Next action for Washington State next week against Portland State, coached by Jerry Glanville. Wow. Remember him? Yes, I do. Here's the call. On the punt, the ball did break the plane of the goal, therefore we have a touchback. Well, a break for Baylor, even with 45 seconds remaining on the clock here in the second quarter. Instead of starting in your own inside your own one-yard line, they'll start at the 20. So the Baylor offense will have the ball. What do you bet they uh, throw it downfield? Well, I mean, Coach Browse is very aggressive, so I, I wouldn't say <laughs> what he so. won't do. But I think that Glanville, you mentioned him. Yeah. He has the great sound bite of he's <laughs> talking in the race. He says, you know what NFL stands for? Not for long. If you keep making calls <laughs> like that. I just remember that. When you said that's what I remember when he was the coach of the Falcons. So Colorful coach. Uh, that he was. All right, see what the Bears do. 45 seconds to go from their own 20, leading 28-14. That's 45 seconds to go before halftime. Whistle, stop play. Previous play. 
It's under review. It's under review. All right. On the field, we have a touchback. <laughs> big Dan Gay just holds his arms out, says, what's the deal? What's the big deal? He says, where's the quick snap? That's what he was looking for, the quick snap. Well, Dan Gay in that offensive line, uh, Coach uh, Art Bryles has said several times that a lot of the season depends on the play in the trenches. On the offensive and defensive line, that puts a lot on the back of those offensive linemen. Dan Gay says, we'll take it. It, it does, but, I mean, that's, that's football, you know, offensive, defensive line, that's the trenches. That's where the battle is mainly. Skill positions, you know, they, they do what they do, but we have to basically fight every play. And, and I mean, it's a big responsibility, but we we, we, we love that responsibility, and we, we accept it, and and we just take the team, and we'll, we'll carry it if we have to. Yeah. Dan Gay, senior offensive tackle out of Lafayette, Louisiana. A lot of young fans in attendance here tonight. And again, the weather here in Central Texas right now as we near the uh, 9 o'clock hour Central Time, 81.3 degrees on the Craig Harper digital thermometer. Often imitated, never duplicated. Wind, uh, Ricky, tell us about the wind. Looked like it almost died down a little bit and then picked right back up. Well, it has. It's still about five or six miles an hour down here on the field. The flags are really whipping up top, but down on the field, it's not a big factor at this point. All right, our referee has uh, heard from the replay booth, and here's the call from Roger Gaskin. After review, ruling on the field, stands. Touchback, first and ten. All right, so the Bears will have it first and ten from their own 20. Top of the hour, let's pause for our, our radio affiliates to identify themselves. Presented by ISP, America's home for college sports. This is the Baylor ISP Sports Network. From the 20, first and 10 Bears, final minute of the first half. Griffin flares it out right side to Kendall Wright. Looking for running room, can't get going. He is tackled from behind at the 23-yard line. Good job of pursuit there. Uh, making the tackle is Kevin Coyman, the junior defensive end out of Maple Valley, Washington. And pretty good speed by Coyman to catch up with Kendall Wright, who's an outstanding athlete. Gain of three on the play, second down seven for the Bears from their own 23. 18 seconds to go before halftime. Griffin fakes the handoff, steps up in the pocket, airs it out down the right sideline for Geddes. Geddes dives and he's got it at the 15. What a catch by David Geddes. Nine seconds on the clock. Bears have two timeouts remaining should they use them. How about that play? Griffin airs it out and David Geddes on the receiving end. Well, Coach Browse is known for being very aggressive and as we mentioned, he said, what do you think he'll do? Well, when he, he wants to score as many points as, as he can, and on that he just does Time a simple Baylor. does a simple play action pass, and David Geddes, whenever you have him in the game, as you watch the replay, he just outruns the corner. Actually wasn't bad coverage, but an excellent catch at the eleven at the ten yard line. Sixty-one yard pickup on that pass from Robert Griffin to David Geddes. Bears have had Ricky Thompson some big plays here in the first half. Uh, off the top of my head, I remember a 57-yard run by Griffin, a 46-yard run by Jay Finley, now a 61-yard pass from Griffin to David Gannis. Well, that's right, and that's what makes an offensive football team dangerous. It's hard to do it three yards at a time in today's game, but when you have big plays over 40 yards like the Bears have tonight, that makes it a pretty short football field. Nice job, uh, J.J., by uh, David Gannis to adjust to that ball also and make a catch sliding to the turf. Yes, before that, he only had one catch for 10 yards, but now he has two catches for 71 yards. And you see the talent of Geddes. One of the things, as Ricky, as a former receiver, has talked about is adjusting to the ball in the air as you're running away from it. He did a great job. All right, Bears have it now at the Washington State 16, nine seconds on the clock. Griffin looks left, comes back right, now wants to run. Has to throw it in the end zone, incomplete. Boy, he started to take off, spotted a receiver in the end zone, T.J. Scranton, and threw it just a little bit behind him. Scranton couldn't make the catch. So with two seconds to go, see if the Bears don't go for the field goal attempt right here. Well, as you watch the replay, he does a good job of reading. He almost gets in trouble as he leaks out, 
And what you want from Mr. Scranton is just to keep leaking a little bit. But hey, it was a great opportunity for Baylor, and now they have a chance to tack on three points with this field goal attempt. JJ, they'll spawn it at the 23 on the right hash, kicking from left to right. A 33-yard attempt for Ben Parks. Kick is away, and it is no good. Missed it off to the right side. Final play of the first half, a missed 33-yard field goal by Ben Parks, who was one of the heroes in the Texas high school football all-star game. Played right before the start of fall drills began for Baylor and for colleges around the country. Going to watch for Ricky Thompson, see if he can catch up with Coach Bryles going in at halftime. Bears going to go in at halftime, leading 28 to 14. Here is our Ricky Thompson with Bears head coach, Art Bryles. Coach Bryles. Good job with this football team coming back after Washington State had tied it up at 14. Yeah, I mean, our guys are playing hard. Been nice to get three right there or a touchdown, you know, so that's kind of a, a downer going into halftime. But our guys are battling, you know, and that's all we can do. We're going to keep battling 30 more minutes, try to get out here with a win. Fast-paced football game on both sides of the ball. Been pretty fast. I mean, both teams are hungry. Okay, Coach, thanks. Back. Rick, thanks very much. Thanks to Coach Bryles going in at halftime where the Bears have a two-touchdown lead on the visitors from Pullman, Washington. Halftime score, Baylor 28, Washington State 14. Halftime activities coming up. Welcome back on FSN. We're at Floyd Casey Stadium in Waco. Halftime score, Baylor up on Washington State by a score of 28-14. J.J. Joe, John Morris, and J.J., what jumps out at, at you from the halftime stats? Really, the offensive production. If you look at Baylor, I mean, Baylor has 328 yards of total offense in the first half. I mean, on that pace, you're doing over about 600 yards of offense. Now, Washington State, what really jumps out to me from their perspective is they're 7 of 10 on third down. And actually, after three turnovers, Washington State still is really within striking distance of Baylor. Robert Griffin, 6 of 12, 125 yards and a touchdown and put them in a position to score there late. So overall, great offensive performance on both teams for the first half. Bears up on Washington State, 28-14 is our halftime score. Very productive first half offensively for the Bears. 328 yards of offense total. How about 203 yards rushing on 19 carries in the first half? Well, if you look at it, Jay Finley has a great first half going. He broke a big run. There. He has a 98 yards of total rushing in the first half. Robert Griffin, I mean, he really has, I'm sorry, Robert Griffin has 98 yards in the first half. Jay Finley has 81, so 179 yards between those two guys alone. Boy, and some big plays. Baylor really uh, majored in the uh, big plays. Shows the explosiveness of this offense. It really does, and that's what the offense looks for, big play players. Not to force it, but when it's there, to make the play. And Robert and Jay have done that. Absolutely. They've come through the air. They have come on the ground and uh, come from different players. I mean, Griffin with a big pass play to David Geddes. Griffin with a run. Jay Finley with a run. Uh, by the air by the ground and by sea. Ike is out in the <laughs> ocean, but I'm telling you, these guys are acting like, hey, they're a hurricane here tonight. <laughs> hurricane Baylor not making light of the situation whatsoever in the, uh, in the Gulf Coast, but Baylor up on Washington State, 28-14 at halftime. We'll be back in just a moment on FSN and on the Baylor ISP Sports Network. About to begin the second half of play from Floyd Casey Stadium in Waco. It is a nice night now, but there is heavy weather coming to Central Texas. Obviously, Hurricane uh, Ike set to hit the Gulf Coast this evening, and our prayers and thoughts are certainly with the folks in the path of that uh, storm, a lot of whom have evacuated out of the Houston, uh, Freeport, Galveston area and come into Central Texas. We have football right now, and we've got 30 minutes left to play between Baylor and Washington State. Glad you're with us. Appreciate everyone along on television, on FSN, on the Baylor ISP Sports Network on radio as well. And thanks to our affiliates along the radio network who uh, made this work, moving the game from a Saturday to a Friday evening. A lot of you have other commitments, but uh, you have put us uh, on your list, and we appreciate that very much. Good game, J.J., 28-14. Let's go down to Ricky Thompson. Ricky, how about uh, 328 yards of offense in the first half by Baylor? Well, it's a good job. Even more impressive, 203 on the ground, and that was with a lot of big plays in there. We talked about that. It's a shame you don't take advantage of the big play just before half from Griffin to Gattis and put points on the board there. But overall, good production. It looked like early 
that the Bears weren't going to take advantage of three Washington State turnovers. Well, they punched the first turnover in for a touchdown and, uh, you know, are up by two touchdowns. 28-14 are the Bears trying to get their record at 2-1 and one on the season. Cougars looking for their first win of the year with a tough opening stretch of games playing uh, Oklahoma State from the Big 12 in Seattle on the opening weekend, then playing at home against Cal in the second weekend, then traveling and adding to that the uh, the change in the travel schedule to Baylor here in weekend number three. Art Browles and the Bears uh, with the lead over Paul Wolf and the Cougars at halftime. A couple of first year coaches taking over this program, their respective programs. JJ, 30 minutes to go. No reason to think the uh, offensive fireworks uh, were left in the halftime locker room. Hey, I would agree with you, John. And just, just really quickly for, the, for our radio audience, the Capstone Mechanical recap. Uh, your heating and cooling specialist. I mean, really, Robert Griffin is having a great first half, but overall, the thing that I know Coach Browse will be concerned about offensively is we're only one of three on third downs. One of three. Now, you can say, well, we're doing it all on first and second down, but we have to control that. And on Washington State side, they're seven of ten, and you don't want to let them back in this game. I want to remind you that Baylor University, the city of Waco, and keep Waco beautiful, ask that you Go green as you enjoy tonight's game by placing empty plastic bottles in the recycling containers located throughout the stadium. Help us out. Go green. You'll find these recycling containers at all Baylor sporting events. Go Baylor. Go green. John Morris alongside former Baylor quarterback J.J. Joe, former Baylor receiver Ricky Thompson on the sidelines for us. Here we go with the... Second half kickoff by Rooney. Slips a little bit. Short kick. Bounces at the 23. Picked up by Jake Lamar to the 25 to the 30. And down at the 32-yard line. Baylor offense will take over at that point, leading 28-14 over Washington State. Next week for Baylor, another Friday game will be at uh, Hartford, Connecticut to take on the UConn Huskies. Friday's on the road. A little more palatable, J.J., than trying to play a Friday night game at home going up against uh, all the high school games. Well, yes, and next week we'll be in Connecticut. I'm not sure how, what Texas high school football is like in Connecticut, but it can't be as big as it is no, in it Texas. No, can't be. <laughs> Cannot be. Here we go. Robert Griffin, the quarterback, beginning from their own 31-yard line. Griffin sticks it in the gut of Jay Finley right up the middle. Finley out to the 35-yard line. Four-yard gain on first down. Finley with a career-high 91 yards rushing a year ago. He had 81 in the first half tonight. Well, what I would anticipate for Coach Bryles is he wants to go to his bread and butter. When offensive coordinator calls, calls, plays, he's going to try to throw in a few mix-ups, but when he gets to the second half, he wants to go to the things that really work for him well. Finley in the backfield, flanking quarterback Robert Griffin. Three receivers to the left side. Finley again. Ooh, breaks three at the 40. The 35 still on his feet at the 50-yard line into Washington State territory at the 48. Nice knife through the line there. Then he's got a nice burst of speed, which we've seen last week with three touchdowns and already tonight. That's a first down for the Bears in Washington State territory. First and 10 Bears at the Cougars, 49, just underway. A minute into the, into the third quarter from Waco. Two receivers right, two to the left side. The left side, the short side of the field as the Bears travel from right to left in this third period. Leading 28-14. Stick with a good thing, hand it off again. This time it's Ray Sims. He's stacked up maybe a yard to the 48-yard line, no further. Grant, uh, Greg Trent, the senior middle linebacker with the tackle. Well, who, the people who are not getting credit for this, John, we haven't mentioned them, are Dan Gay, James Bernard, Jordan Hervey is in there now, J.D. Walton. They're really controlling the line of scrimmage. If you look at those zone reads, Robert is making the correct read, but then Jay Finley has found the creases between J.D. Walton and his teammates. Look at the formation. Empty backfield, three receivers left, short side of the field, two to the uh, wide side, the right side. Pass right side incomplete and nearly was it intercepted. May have been intercepted by Washington State. No, was not. Bounced off the chest of the intended receiver for Baylor. And you see it bounce in the air. Oh, good call, it did bounce before the pickup was made by Corey Evans, the strong side linebacker. Well, you can tell Washington State has scouted that play. When Baylor goes empty, they're gonna bring a blitz from either the outside of the right side like they did or the outside linebacker on the left. 
They brought out the blitz. They really jumped that. But what you can see Coach Browser do is run the fake screen and the guy release for the fade. So it's a lot of playing games, but that's a, this is a big third down and 10. Third down 10 with 13-10 to play in the third quarter. Bears lead 28-14 over Washington State. Griffin from the shotgun steps up. Dumps it off left side, short pass complete to David Gaddis. Bumped out of bounds at the 45-yard line, not near enough. Needed to reach the 39 for a first down. So that'll bring up fourth down and six coming up for the Bears, an apparent punting situation. Just not enough room to maneuver for uh, David Gaddis after he made that catch. Caught, pushed out of bounds at the sideline. Cougars now have to call a timeout, have to get a man off the field. Timeout, Washington State. They had some timeout issues earlier and take a timeout here prior to the Baylor punt. 12.56 to go, third quarter. Baylor leading Washington State 28-14 on FSN and the Baylor ISP. And now as they've had a little time to think about it as we get set to resume play, on a fourth down, what is it? Fourth down and six from the uh, Washington State 45. Derek Epperson leaves the field, and the offense goes back out there. All right, it'd be interesting to see if this is uh, something Coach Browse is doing to draw him off sides or if he's actually going to go for it, but this is an aggressive play call. Here we go, fourth down six from the Cougars, 45-yard line. Two receivers right, two to the left side. Griffin at the line of scrimmage. Now stands up, and Baylor calls the timeout. Timeout. Baylor, first shot, timeout the half. Couldn't draw them offside, so now maybe the Bears will punt it away. 12.56 on the clock. 28-14 our score, Bears on top. Baylor and Washington State will play in uh, men's basketball this year. We had a shot earlier on Baylor vision of Curtis Geralds and Henry Dugat. No doubt some of their teammates are in attendance tonight here at the game. It's part of the Big 12 Pac-10 Challenge, Baylor and Washington State in basketball. Cougars won the game in Waco this past season. We'll play in Pullman this upcoming December. Interesting that the game in Waco was the game at which uh, Art Riles was introduced to the crowd. I believe it was the same night of his press conference or his introduction here in Waco. Received a rousing ovation from the fans when he ripped off a Baylor uh, sweat jacket and had on a bear pit jersey. And now here he is against Washington State in football this evening. Here's the punt by Derek Epperson. Over the head of the kick returner, takes a side left turn and out of bounds at the five yard line. Nice job placing the ball out of bounds at the five by the sophomore, Derek Epperson. Well, that was a perfect punt. Derek Epperson was an understudy to Daniel Sepulveda for many years, and that was a great kick. That ball hit on about the five yard line and just started bouncing directionally to the left. And he's pinned too. He, if you remember in the first half, he knocked one out at the 10 yard line. So he has, he's having a really good punting evening. Yeah, so his two punts tonight. Uh, one has gone out of bounds at the 10, one has gone out of bounds at the five. Here we go from the five for Washington State. Cougars traveling left to right in the third quarter, which has 1247 remaining. Quarterback Kevin Lapina hands the ball off. Right up the middle is, uh, is it Dwight Terry, the carry. I'm sorry, Dwight Hardy with the carry. Joe Pavelic with the tackle for the Bears. And a gain of a yard out to the six-yard line for Washington State. And I'll tell you, Pavelic has taken this game very personally this evening. I mean, that was one where a middle linebacker stepped right up in the hole, and he filled it and made a great hit. Kevin Lapina, the junior quarterback, second down and nine for Washington State. Five-step drop, just gets out of, the end, out of the end zone, now is tackled at the five. Loss of one on the play, and I tell you, he was really close to being sacked for a safety back inside the goal line. Well, Joe Pavelic is angry at himself. He had a blitz. He watched the replay and just missed him. And I'm going to tell you, Kevin Lapino, evidently he is kin to Houdini because he's made several people miss. And on that play, he was trapped and came out of the crease and made a fantastic scramble to get back to the line of scrimmage. Third down and 10 for Washington State from their own five-yard line. Early stages, third quarter, Bears up by two touchdowns on the Cougars. Lapina from the shotgun stands just inside his own goal line. Two receivers left, looks left. Pats his feet, passes. Brandon Gibson has the catch, and he's got a first down. Across the 15 to the 16-yard line, first down, Washington State. Stations, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification along the Baylor ISP Sports Network.
Brandon Gibson, the go-to guy on third down and 10, a first down reception for Gibson. It's first and 10 Cougars at their 16. Lopina fakes the handoff. He'll keep it off left tackle. He gets out to the 20-yard line. Four-yard gain by Kevin Lapina. Tackle by Justin Lamb for the Bears. Second down and six coming up for the Cougars with 10.48 to play in the third quarter. Well, I'm impressed by Kevin Lapina. He's made a couple little advice throws. He got picked off once, but he's actually managing the game well for a kid who this is his first start. Second down, six for the Cougars from the 20. Passes right flat. That's out to Brandon Gibson. He makes the catch, but runs into his opposite number four, Jeremy Williams, who makes the tackle. Williams with the tackle at the 19-yard line. Ricky Thompson, a pass completion for a loss of one. Well, I'm not sure it was a pass. That may have been a lateral. The line judge was pointing with his left hand into the backfield like it may have been a lateral. Very close to Gibson not catching that ball as well. All right, so net result is a loss of one. Third down and seven for Washington State. 19 uh, from the 19-yard line for the Cougars with 9.59 to go in the third quarter. Lapina in the shotgun. Here's a third down opportunity for the Cougars. They feasted on these opportunities in the first half. Lapina pressured, and he's sacked back inside the 10. Back at the eight-yard line, Justin Lamb met at the quarterback with Vincent Rhodes, and a sack will bring up fourth down and 16 for Washington State. Well, I'm not going to mess with Ricky on this one, but Leon Freeman came in on the other defensive end side, and those two defensive ends without the blitz got to Kevin Lapina and got the sack. Give your man Leon Freeman some credit. You picked him as a difference maker prior to the game. Punting opportunity for Washington State, but flags are dropped. Private snap, ball start, number 20 on the offense. Five-yard penalty, range fourth down. All right, now back him up five more, and Washington State will now punt from the back of the end zone. The line of scrimmage is the five. The punter, Reed Forrest, will stand about nine yards deep in the end zone. Fourth down and, well, it doesn't matter. It's fourth and 21 is what it is. Low snap. Forrest gets the punt away. Boy, a very nice punt. Joe Bennett will watch it bounce. It does take a Baylor bounce back up to the 41-yard line where it's touched dead. Bears ball. They'll take over at their own 41-yard line. A little scuffling at the end of the play. Bears lead Washington State 28-14. Live local now. John Morris, J.J. Joe, Ricky Thompson from Floyd Casey Stadium in Waco. Gary Rhodes, our statistician and spotter in the booth tonight. Craig Harper, our producer and engineer, producing a television uh, broadcast and a radio broadcast, aren't you, Craig? Katie Ludington on the sidelines with our parabolic mic. And Bradford Hines in the Hillcrest Health System ISP studio. We're glad you're with, lis listening and watching wherever you might be this evening. Welcome to those of you on the web at BaylorBears.com. Following the punt, Baylor offense takes over at its own 42-yard line, 8.57 to play, third quarter. Griffin at quarterback, fakes the handoff, he'll keep it. Open, right side, 40, 50, 40, the 30. Nobody will catch Robert Griffin all the way into the end zone from 58 yards away. Another big play for the Baylor offense. Well, I'll tell you, that was a big play by the Baylor tight end, Justin Akers. Justin Akers did his job. Robert Griffin rides the running back into the line. He fakes the ball to the running back, brings it back out to the left. Zone read play. Basic read in college football, but then it turns into a foot race after he gets an excellent block by Justin Akers on the left end. Another big play for the Bears of 58 yards. Here's the extra point kick. It is up and put it on the board from Ben Parks. 8.47 to go in the third quarter. Our new score, the Baylor Bears 35, the Washington State Cougars 14. More big plays from the legs of Robert Griffin. Bears lead by three touchdowns over Washington State. 35-14, our new score. Baylor up on Washington State, 8.47 to play in the third quarter. Another big play, this one on the legs of quarterback Robert Griffin and the crowd here at Floyd Casey Stadium loves it on a Friday night. Well, I'll tell you, I mean, when you have a player that's a game breaker and you already have veteran linemen like a J.D. Walton, like a Jordan Hervey, Jason Smith, Dan Gay, that one player can make a big difference. Great run. 
Wind is picked up to the point. The boss to be held on the ground as it's kicked off and a fair catch called for and taken at the 27 by Washington State. Other Baylor uh, teams in action tonight. I want to tell you Baylor soccer played and lost to Arizona State one to nothing. They'll play again on Sunday afternoon at five against UT San Antonio. Good luck to uh, Coach Marcy Jobson and Baylor soccer on Sunday. And Baylor Volleyball playing in a tournament in Eugene, Oregon, knocked off Eastern Washington tonight 3-1. to one. That means an 8-0 and o start to the season for Baylor. Ties the school record for the best start at 8-0. and o. That's good. That's outstanding. Jim Barnes, Baylor Volleyball will play two more matches tomorrow in Eugene. First and 10, Washington State from the 28. Lapina's gone the entire way. A quarterback pass nearly intercepted. Joe Pa has one pick tonight. Nearly got another one there, but he tipped the ball away from the intended receiver, Brandon Gibson. Well, I, I tell you what, Joe Pavelic is having an all-around game with an interception, a fumble recovery, a big, a big sack, major tackles, and then he has a pass deflection. So he's really reading well as you watch the replay there, and he knocks down an apparent completion. Might have been intended for Daniel Blackledge. Those two were crossing. It's second down and 10 for Washington State from, the, uh, from their own 28. Lapina to throw, stopped in his tracks, now rolls right, now throws up field. It's tipped away again by Pavelic. Back to back plays. He tips the ball away on opposite sides of the field. Well, that's Michael Willis. Kevin Lapina has done what we've seen him do all night long, and I believe that's probably why Coach Wolf made the substitution. He's a little bit more mobile. He gets out more so than Gary Rogers does, but Michael Willis working from left to right on the scramble, and once again, Joe Pavelic, as you watch the replay, knocks it away. Jordan Lake is probably mad because he probably gets the INT if he doesn't hit it. <laughs> <laughs> it is third down and 10 for Washington State from their own 28. Watch Pavelic in the middle. Lapina in an empty backfield. Three receivers right, two to the left side. Third down and 10 for Washington State and a flag down, and the Cougars took too long. They Play took game. too long. Washington State, five-year penalty. Remains third down. So back them up five, and now they're looking at third down and 15. Coach Bryles urging his team to keep that tempo going. He loves to push the tempo, doesn't he? He really does. I mean, that's his style. I mean, that, and that's, players love that. Players hate to slow down. Uh, and, you know, and in a game like this, he, he zooms confident, and zooms confident by that fast pace. Now as the Cougars break the huddle, come to the line of scrimmage, they Blow the whistles again, and the officials will get together. The officials doing a lot of huddling. This uh, they have done a bunch, <laughs> haven't they? I'm not sure what this one's about. Exactly. Clock stops with 8.23 to play, third quarter. Baylor leads Washington State 35-14. There's a long way to go in this one, but uh, if the Bears win the game this evening over Washington State. Have a clock correction. Please put 8.32 back on the clock. 832. Thank you. So that's the reason. Good catch there. Instead of 823, it'll go to 832. Start to say if the Bears win this one, they're two and one. They've got a lot of momentum going on the road for the first time this season to Connecticut next Friday. Here's third down and 15 for the Cougars from their own 23. Lapina. Pressure, throws it, sets up the screen left side. Jeshua Anderson breaks one tackle. Can't quite get to the first down marker. He's going to be about a yard short. They needed 15 yards. Dwayne Crawford kept him from getting to the first down marker. It'll be fourth down and one for uh, Washington State, and their punter is coming on the field. And a Baylor player is slow getting up. Looks like Vincent Rhodes, John. He had a really good rush on, but he got clipped very late in that play. Uh, and hopefully it's nothing serious, but he got clipped low. And I wouldn't be surprised if Coach Wolf thinks about this and thinks about going with the score. Uh, already 35 to 14, but this gives him more time to think about. It. You know, I thought it was about a yard, but it's more like two yards that the Cougars would need. Fourth down in a couple. If you look at the chains over there, they need to reach the 38 as Vincent Rhodes is being attended to on the field. His teammates around him. Training staff, Mike Sims is out there. Dr. Jim Bowden is out there. Waco Bone and Joint Clinic. We appreciate those folks who've been the Baylor team doctor since 1973. Been through a lot of players like you, JJ. He sure like did. Like Ricky. Well, I tell you, he, uh, uh, you know, he really worked on me. Sims worked on me all the time. It's like he's like, <laughs> you know, how can we put you back together? Uh, but uh, 
uh, you know, if they're really looking at his knee. It doesn't look like, I mean, you never know, but he's not breathing in pain. A lot of times when you're looking at a guy's leg and he's kind of in pain, you really get concerned. But he's at least sitting up, he's talking, he's communicating. So hopefully there's nothing serious here. All right, going to help Big Benny Rhodes up on his feet. And he'll come to the near sideline. Coach Browles goes out to check on him. Coach Browles and the staff have been very high on Vincent Rhodes uh, ever since they got here. Took him to the Big 12 Media Days in Kansas City. Uh, it called him uh, a war daddy. And that's, that's a great compliment, isn't it, for a defensive tackle? It really is. Vincent off on the sidelines, Washington State. Set up for an apparent punt, fourth down and two. The line of scrimmage, their own 36-yard line. High snap. Forrest gets the punt away. Wow, nice high, booming punt. He's had a good night. Drives Joe Bennett back inside his own five. Gets a block out to the 15, the 20. Has some open territory. Flag is down, 30, 40 to the 50. Near sideline to the 40. Down and fumbled the ball at the end of the run. There's a couple of things to check on here. A flag back, uh, several of them, back at about the 15-yard line. Then a fumble at the end of that nice return by Joe Bennett. Well, that's the longest return Ben has had, but actually a Washington State player had a chance to recover it, but it looks like Baylor's player, either Ernest Smith or I can't see it, recovered the ball. But we do have a flag that's right in the vicinity of where you would get a clip block in the back uh, or something like that against the return team. Let's see. Another meeting of the officials, then we'll get the word. Everybody sort of heading back to that far end, the south end of the field, like no return yardage is not going to... Not going to count in Baylor's favor right now. Officials still talking. 7.50 to play, third quarter. Well, old Joe won't even fuss about this one because when you fumble at the end, you can't really fuss. Right. <laughs> ball was recovered by Baylor. During the return, blocking the back, number 17. If you have the distance to the goal, first down. Well, that's tough. That wipes out a big uh, return by Joe Bennett. Alex Kushmir is whistled for the penalty on special teams. Well, as the Baylor offense comes back out, John, right now Robert Griffin has the most rushing yards by a Baylor quarterback. And I figure as a former Baylor quarterback, I better say that. Uh, but I was never as swift as this kid. Uh, but he has 156 yards rushing. Uh, and this game is far from over. And that's a better wow. record for a quarterback? It really is. And Cody Carlson, who is a much better athlete than me as well, I think he rushed for 100 yards back in 1986. He was the last Baylor quarterback to rush for 100 in a game, and that's all the way back to 86, so it's been wow. a long time. And you're right, we've still got a quarter and a half to play. Exactly. Griffin in the shotgun. Bears begin from their own seven, first and ten. Hand off to Finley, I believe. Stacked up, pushed backwards. He'll get out close to the 10-yard line, maybe just shy of the 10. Baylor 35, Washington State 14. It was a 28-14 Baylor lead at halftime. Bears at UConn next Friday. Then they've got a week off before uh, Big 12 play. Opens October 4th with those Oklahoma Sooners defending Big 12 champs coming into Waco. Oklahoma, incidentally, on the road playing in Seattle against Washington Huskies tomorrow evening. Gain of two, second down eight from the nine for the Bears. Griffin will fake the handoff, keep it right side. Uses the block of Dan Gay. Flag down, Griffin down at the 15. Maybe a holding call here. Bears having trouble getting going in the right direction on this possession. Well, that's thrown by that referee again. I mean, it was right in front of him, and it looks like he's pointing it out, and he's going to call an apparent hold. Oh, number 71 on the offense. Half distance, and a spot of foul. Well, Mr. Dan Gay, and I hate that he only gets his name called. That's why I'm trying to call his name. I hate poor linemen. I yeah. feel sorry for those guys sometimes. But, but you know, with Robert Griffin, a lot of times you just tell it, just get in the way because a kid like that with that talent, uh, if you make him go one way, he'll make the cut and go the other. But Dan has had an excellent game, and Baylor now uh, really has to step up the tempo because you don't want to give Washington State great field position. Andrew Judy is in the backfield. Larry Washington is back there. Jeremy Sanders in the backfield. In fact, Griffin will pitch it to Sanders, looking for room, trying to turn the corner on the left side. He can't get much upfield. Only back to the nine-yard line. So the Bears, a uh, tough possession here. 
with the penalties. Now looking at third down and call it nine from the 10. Nope, ball is spotted on the nine yard line. So third down and nine from the nine. Well, John, if I asked you, what is Baylor's third down conversion ratio to this? What would you think with us winning 35 14? Uh, you know, it's not as good as you might think. <laughs> It's one of four. Is that right? 25%. But wow. you know, when you make a one play 59 yard uh, touchdown score, sometimes third down doesn't mean much. And only four opportunities. Exactly. Third down. Here's one right here. Third down and nine from the nine for the Baylor offense. Griffin at quarterback in the shotgun. He's going to ask for a timeout. Timeout on the timeout. field comes with 6.01 to play in the third quarter. Bears up on Washington State, 35 14. We will keep it right here. Again, we appreciate those of you uh, listening on the Baylor ISP Sports Network and watching on FSN and Fox College Sports Atlantic. We appreciate our good partners at FSN for making this broadcast available this evening under, uh, under unusual circumstances with game move from Saturday to a Friday night. We've talked a lot about Robert Griffin this evening. If you watch him out there, he is one cool customer. He is very poised. We asked Robert Griffin if he is as uh, calm and collected out there as he appears. Uh, definitely, uh, I'm comfortable back there. I trust the guys around me, especially the guys in front of me, and that's uh, real important. And as a quarterback, you have to portray that you're comfortable because if you don't look comfortable, then the team's not comfortable. Very uh, a quiet confidence in this guy. He's not cocky. He doesn't come across as cocky right. at all, but he is extremely confident. Well, that, that's a that's a great testament to him, and you know you can tell his mother and father, but he's very confident and really plays well. Here's the play, third down nine from the nine for the Bears. 6:01 to play in the third quarter. Ball spotted on the left hash. Looks right, pumps once. Now going to air it out down the right sideline for David Gaddis. He dives, can't make the catch at the Washington State 40. Those two connected on a play very similar to that back in the first half. This one, not quite the love connection, and it's incomplete, and that'll bring up fourth down. Well, John, if you look, as you look at that replay, the big thing here is they did the same thing, five wides out, and then Washington State brings the blitz. On this, they fake that little screen and send the guy up the sideline. That's the option play off that, and David Geddes outruns the cornerback, and I'll tell you, when he looks at film tomorrow, he'll hate to look at that tape because the coaches will say you have to make that catch. Punting situation for the Bears. Chance Staden is back. Nice, high, booming punt from Derek Epperson. Staden takes it at the 28. There's a flag down on the return. Staden is pulled down at the 33-yard line. Good coverage by Baylor. Let's give credit to the man who made the tackle, Tim Atchison again. A safety out of Copperas Cove, but let's check the flags. Well, John, that really looks like an, a block in the back. It was right in the open, and the back judge was sitting there Look at block it back in the 25 on the return. 10 yard penalty. First down. Well, that's exactly what we thought. I mean, it was right out there in front. You couldn't miss it. Uh, you could hear the <laughs> crowd react to it. Everybody in the crowd really saw that as well. Exactly. Let's check the penalty. See what penalty yardage is tonight against uh, Washington State. Seems like they've had a bunch. Well, they've had a, quite a few, John. I mean, really, I mean, you know, really Baylor and Washington State both have had six penalties, but 35 yards prior to that penalty. So it's about 50 yards, seven for 50 for okay. Washington State. All right, seems like more. So first and 10 from their own 20 for the Cougars, trailing 35-14. And off coming to the right side is Dwight Tardy. Tardy is spilled at the 25-yard line. Gain of five on the play will leave the Cougars second down and five from their own 25. And there's a Cougar player that is slow to get up. 2100 mile flight from Pullman, Washington to Waco. Cougars made this morning, arrived here about uh, two o'clock this afternoon. They will play the game tonight. They have to give the pilots who apparently made a trip from Denver, Colorado to Pullman to pick up the team and then flew them here. So they have to give the pilots whatever the time is off before right. they can fly again. So they may not leave Waco till about 1.15 in the morning. Wow. So that would it's make not like going day. straight. Yeah, not like going straight to the airport and taking off. Well, John, that's Micah Hannum, one of the re re returning starters, a right tackle, and he's going out. Looks like he may be okay, uh, and hopefully that's the case. Four down linemen defensively for Baylor. It is second and five for Washington State from the 25. Lopina passes, short screen, left side. Brandon Gibson gets behind his blocker, plays it nicely out across the 35 to the 38-yard line. 
Good job by Brandon Gibson to uh, tuck in there behind his blocker and pick up good yardage out to the 37-yard line, a 12-yard gain, and a first down for Washington State. Well, it looks like Baylor was going to have immediate pressure, but that's one of those wide receiver screens. And Brandon Gibson's not a speed burner, but very smooth and silky to pick up that first down. 5.04, 5.03, 5.02 to play in the third quarter. Lapina at the snap. Flag down. Pass to Gibson, right side. He turns on the speed and is caught from behind by Anthony Jones with some help from Chris Burke. Now let's check the flag on the completion. It'll be a first down to the Baylor 46, but waiting on the ruling. Illegal motion. Number 85 on the offense. Never was set. Five-yard penalty, repeat first down. Joshua Anderson, one of the young starting receivers, didn't get set. And that, that turns a, a really good gain for Brandon Gibson into now you have a first down and, and 15. So a uh, young player, this Washington State team has a lot of young players. They lost some key players from last year, the quarterback Alex Brink, uh, another top receiver. Uh, Brandon Gibson is one of the veterans back, and they're really struggling here early, but having a very solid game this evening. Call it first down 15 for Washington State. Line of scrimmage, their own 32, traveling left to right. Lapina passes right flat. This one's complete again to Gibson. Three straight plays, they've gone to him. He is bumped out of bounds at the 37, 38-yard line. Gain of six on the play will leave the Cougars second down and nine. Well, Coach Wolf is going to his veteran, as you see there on the wide receiver screen. And Brandon Gibson has really good moves. I mean, he has a way and has the knowledge of how to pick up six, seven, eight, nine yards. And they're going to, hey, let's get this kid the ball and see if we can get back in this game. Second down nine for the Cougars from their own 38. Four and a half to play in the third quarter. Lopina over the middle. Pass is caught by Tardy out of the backfield. Gets a nice block, then runs right into Jake Lamar. Here's another flag thrown into the Baylor defensive secondary area. Lamar with the tackle for the Bears. Here's the call. Well, it looks like this game is getting messy in a hurry. That's now the 14th penalty, and that's the eighth on Washington State. Really? Uh, so it was a very clean game early, but looks like uh, there may be another one on Washington State. Well, let's see. No foul on the play. Ball's caught behind the line of scrimmage. Therefore, the blocking downfield is legal. Well, the blocking downfield was legal. Pick up the flag. It Station. is officially still a clean game. <laughs> <laughs> Stations give you a chance to identify yourselves following this next play as we hit the top of the hour, 10 p.m. in Central Texas and the Central Time Zone. So first down and 10 for Washington State. They're at their own 49-yard line. Lopina takes the handoff. He'll keep it left side. Gets a nice block. Drop the ball. It's on the ground. Lopina has to retreat to make the fumble recovery. Just dropped it. Had to dive back on it to cover it at the 46-yard line. Loss of three on the play. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. Presented by ISP, America's home for college sports. This is the Baylor ISP Sports Network. Second down and 13 for Washington State. From their own 46, Lapina in the shotgun, has the snap. Shifts over to the left side, pressured and sacked. Sam Sledge on top of him, back at the 35-yard line. The converted offensive lineman, Sam Sledge, with the sack. And Kevin Lapina is very slow to get up at the end of that play. Well, I'll tell you, Jamian Hardeman is coming. He came in for Leon Freeman. He did a stunt inside as you watch that replay. Put a little pressure. Kevin Lapina leaks outside. Sam Sledge just does a little cowboy hook outside. And Kevin Lapina runs right into the sack. This is a big third down and 23 for the Washington State Cougars. Now, this is a big one. That Baylor defensive line starting to assert it themselves. 2.30 to play in the third quarter. Bears lead 35-14. Third down, 23 for Washington State. Here's a tack, and a ball is loose, and it's covered by Baylor. Chased down from behind by Antonio Jones. He knocked the ball loose. It was covered. 
by the War Daddy, Vincent Rhodes with the fumble recovery. The Bears have their fourth takeaway tonight from Washington State. And that is, John, I mean, that's actually the fourth, exactly, that's the fourth takeaway. And what you're seeing, Kevin Lapina hadn't really played. He went to Kansas State, transferred to Washington State. Now he's finally eligible, and there's something about game speed. And he hadn't started. He played a little last week. When you finally get a taste of game speed, and the Baylor defensive coaches are letting their athletes run, Antonio Jones, Antonio Johnson, uh, Joe Pavelic, those guys can run, and trying to get away from them, I'll tell you, it's pretty tough. Fourth turnover tonight. Bears trying to take advantage of 35-14 on Washington State. First and 10 from the 32. Handoff is Jay is uh, no, it's Jacoby Jones with the carry. Jones slipped one tackle, pulls his way forward to the 27-yard line. Good tough running by Jacoby Jones, a five-yard pickup. Ricky Thompson leaves the Bears, second down and five. I tell you what. This pace may be finally catching up with this Washington State defense. They seem really tired. It's been fast this entire football game. Remember, they just flew in this morning, so all this combined may be catching up. Yeah, you sort of see those signs of fatigue, don't you, on the defensive side for Washington State. Second down five for the Bears from the Cougars, 27. Quarterback is Robert Griffin. He's gone the entire way for the Bears tonight. Hands it to Jones again, right up the middle. First into the secondary and tackled at the 14-yard line. Gets up, pounding his fist. That's a first down run by Jacoby Jones. Well, I tell you, it is taking a toll, but it's really not time of possession on the field. I mean, Baylor's only had the ball about 15 minutes on this game compared to Washington State's 25 minutes. But what's happened is when you turn the ball over four times and that immediate change, and that immediate change, Ricky, as you know, really wears on the, on the defensive team. Well, it does. They've been out there a lot. Maybe not a lot of plays, but a lot of series, and that wears on you. Jones, 5'11", senior, out of bangs. Had the first down run, first and 10 Bears from the Cougars, 14-yard line. Dial Jacoby Jones again, number 25, and he gets maybe a yard to the 13-yard line. Jacoby, part of a good stable of running backs who have all been productive. There it is. You know, Jay had a good game. And uh, J-Mo had a good game, and you know what I'm saying? We, me and Ray came in and contributed. And so it, it just, on the sideline, it just, it's an uplifting spirit whenever we have big runs like that. Yobi Jones coming out to the near side. Second down nine for the Bears. Fake the pitch. Griffin wants to keep hemmed in and gets forward to the 10-yard line. No further. Fake that pitch to Jeremy Sanders, and then Griffin kept it to the left side. So a gain of a couple of yards there will leave the Bears third down and six from the 10-yard line. Baylor leading 35-14. Final seconds tick off in the third quarter. 16, now 15, now 14 to play. The Bears may not run another play. They won't here in the third quarter. We have played three quarters here in Waco. The Baylor offense has been in high gear for much of the night. The Baylor defense has four takeaways from Washington State. 15 minutes to play in Waco as we head to the fourth quarter. Our score, Baylor 35, Washington State 14 on FSN and the Baylor ISP Sports Network. Through three quarters of play, Baylor up on Washington State 35-14 our score. Third quarter stats, Baylor 435 yards of offense, 306 rushing, 129 passing. Washington State 218 total, 44 rushing, 174 through the air. Here's the play. Pitch in the backfield, headed to the right side. That is a touchdown by Kendall Wright. The freshman from Pittsburgh, Kendall Wright, hits pay dirt on the first play of the fourth quarter. Well, I'll tell you, I mean, that is a fantastic call by Coach Browns, a total misdirection. You got uh, Robert Griffin is having a fantastic day. Jay Finley, as you watch the replay on option speed to the left, Kendall Wright comes around to the right side, finds the corner of the end zone, and he just outruns the Washington State defender. Fantastic call. Check in with Ricky after the extra point kick. It is up, and it is on the board by the Baylor kicker. Let's check in with Ricky Thompson. I'll tell you what, guys. I think that was originally a pass. Justin Akers had come out from the tight end spot, was wide open in the corner of the end zone. He looked like he was reaching up to throw, and so he had an easy run into the end zone. So I think that was an option. Inside Floyd Casey Stadium, where the Bears have built a 42-14 lead on Washington State. First play of the fourth quarter was a pitch to Kendall Wright in the backfield, and he ran it in for the Baylor touchdown. Flag down on the, on the kickoff. 
Chance Staten returns it out to the 34-yard line. But let's check the flag. 14:48 showing on the clock. It's against us. More of the third quarter numbers or uh, stats through three quarters. Give you that right after the call. Offside, simple one on the kicking team. Five yards, they had it, did it a run. First down. Yeah. So move the Cougars up five. They'll begin from their own 30. Let's see where they spot it. 39, up, call it the 40 yard line. Right at the 40, their own 40. Robert Griffin, 10 carries, 100. 59 yards rushing in the game tonight, two touchdowns. Jay Finley, eight carries, 102 yards rushing. Washington State has a new quarterback on the field. It's the big senior. And his first play, he'll pitch it in the backfield. Dwight Tardy coming right, gets to the corner, pushed out of bounds inside the 40-yard line. It's actually the uh, freshman who is big as well. It's Marshall Lobestall. 6'3", 199-pound freshman out of Oak Harbor, Washington. So Marshall Lobestall takes uh, – no, I'm sorry. It, it is Gary Rogers. Gary it Rogers. is the senior. My mistake. Gary Rogers, 6'7", 222-pound senior. Out of Mukilteo, Washington. Has started the first two games this year. Comes in here in the fourth. Passes it left side. Man wide open. And the catch is made by Blackledge. Blackledge on the ground from Dwayne Crawford. Crawford with the tackle at the 21-yard line. That is a first down for Washington State. And again, the uh, the quarterback, the new quarterback is Gary Rogers. Started the first two games this year. Comes in in relief in the fourth quarter tonight. A couple of numbers to pass along for you. So the Bears lead 42-14. 14.05, fourth quarter. First and 10, Rodgers gets to Tardy, right side, spilled on a nice tackle by Jeremy Williams, just inside the 20-yard line. J.J., Baylor scored 40-plus points in back-to-back -back games for the first time since 1994. The Bears accomplished the feat at TCU and at home against SMU. Baylor's first game with at least 300 yards rushing since a 319-yard effort against Fresno State in 1997. Second down, eight for Washington State. Rodgers will run it right up the middle. Big 6'7 quarterback gets inside the 15-yard line to the 13. Joe Paw on the tackle for Baylor. But Gary Rodgers, like you said, he started the first two games. He's a, very, he's a veteran guy, new offense for him. He's 6'7, big kid. And I believe the thing that, that probably a, Calls Coach Wolf to start him as he was throwing several interceptions. Had three last week and only completing 49% of his passes. So he's battling for a job, and you think he'll come in and, and really try to put a uh, heroic effort together here to get this team back in the game. Run by Rodgers leaves the Cougars two yards short, third down and two from the Baylor 14 yard line. Rodgers in the shotgun, two backs in the backfield. He'll hand it off. Stop, now burst outside to the left side, and he'll get to the 11 for a first down for Washington State. Boy, I thought they had him hemmed in, but he burst through. Tackle was made by Sam Sledge. The run by the Cougars, uh, Chris Ivory, the Longview High School product. And it is a first down for the Cougars at the 11 and a half yard line. Sam Sledge getting more and more playing time for Baylor. Out of Midland in that defensive line. His dad, former great offensive lineman, David Sledge for the Bears. First and 10, Cougars at the Baylor 11 and a half yard line. Gary Rogers, the quarterback, and in motion is Gibson. Stays in the block, Gibson rolls right. Pressured by Pavelic, now scrambling, now tackled for a loss. Back outside the 15 yard line, Earl Patan got to him for the tackle. Well, that was just great recognition by the Baylor offense. You can tell as Excellent film study. They brought uh, Mr. Gibson, Brandon Gibson, the favorite receiver from the outside inside. They were going to do a little fake play action and leak him out like a little waggle play, but too much pressure by Earl Patan and great coverage by the Baylor secondary to cover up that play. And it was Joe Pavelic who got in there to slow up Gary Rogers in initially. Loss of five, second down, 15 for Washington State. They're at the Baylor 17-yard line. 
Rodgers back, dancing, pops it over the middle. It is complete just inside the 15-yard line. Nice pass right on the money. Daniel Blackledge on the receiving end. So they pick up uh, three of the five they lost on the previous play. It is third down and 12 for Washington State at the Baylor 14. It's a big third down play here, J.J. It really is, and Washington State probably will go for it on fourth down. I can't see them kicking a field goal, so we'll see. Yeah, down by 28, you wouldn't think they would. Third down and 12, Rodgers in the shotgun. Pressured again, throws off his back foot. It's incomplete, off to the right side. Incompletion, and it will be fourth down and 12 for Washington State from the Baylor 14. Pressure by Baylor uh, linebacker Antonio Johnson, the sophomore out of Waco High. Jake Lamar in there on the defensive pressure as well. Well, I say that they, I couldn't see him kicking a field goal, but after you have an incomplete pass and you have fourth down and 12, I can understand him kicking this field goal. So, uh, you know, you get some points here potentially, but uh, disappointing finish of this drive. Ball spotted at the 21. It is a 31-yard attempt from Nico Grasso, sophomore from Encino, California. It is plenty long, and it is through the optic yellow uprights at the north end zone. New score, 10.42 to play. Baylor 42, Washington State 17 on FSN and the Baylor ISP Sports Network. 10 minutes, 42 seconds on the clock in the fourth quarter. Washington State Cougars have just chosen to kick a field goal. They punched it in from 31 yards out. Makes the score 42-17. Baylor on top over the Cougars. Visitors from Pullman, Washington. And if you're the return team, you really have to make sure that you look and make sure he kicks the ball before you bail out of there. Kick is away by Rooney. End over end kick. Taken on the left side, the five-yard line by Jake Lamar. Snakes his way up the left sideline to the 20 to the 25-yard line. Tackle was made by Lewis Bland, the linebacker, backup linebacker for Washington State. The Baylor offense will trot back out there at the 25-yard line. We'll check, and it is indeed. As Jake Lamar comes off the field, it will be Robert Griffin going back on the field. The freshman has gone the entire way at quarterback tonight for the Bears. And a record-setting night already, J.J., for the freshman quarterback. Yes, 159 rushing as of last account, and now you can bet. Only 15 passes thrown tonight, so Coach Bryles wants to run this ball and be physical and get out of here with the W. Very productive running game tonight for the Bears. Keep it on the ground, hand it off to Jacoby Jones. Tries the middle, not much there. A yard at the most to the 26-yard line. Bears more intent on running clock now with 10.23 to play. Up 42-17 on the Cougars. Yeah, and one thing I know Coach Browse wants to focus on is, you know, finish the game, finish the game. You know, he had the high tempo, and he's going to keep the high tempo. He's going to at least keep him going up to the line of scrimmage, but he wants the team to be physical until the clock says quadruple, quadruple zero. Andrew Judy in in the backfield for Baylor. Griffin in the shotgun. He'll milk that play clock for everything it's worth. J.D. Walton still the center to Finley, handoff. Boy, nice burst by J.D. by uh, Jay Finley behind J.D. Walton. He gets all the way out to the 39-yard line. And I'll tell you, that offensive line, they're really doing the yeoman errors. You look, watch the replay. He skips right between J.D. Walton, and I believe that is the right guard for Baylor, uh, Mr. <laughs> I'm the fluid, Mr. James Bernard, and he really makes a nice cut, gets up, gets small. That's the thing about a running back is when you get to the hole, you just got to get small, and that means you kind of really squeeze down, pop through, and then you get to the second level. T.J. Scranton in at a receiver. He splits out wide to the left side. Wide to the right side is Kyle Mitchell in for the Bears. First and 10 from the 39. Again, Jay Finley right up the middle. Hip hops right across one would-be tackler and is down at the 44-yard line. Gain of five on the play as the Bears continue to run that clock as they continue to run that pigskin. 9.04 as we reach the nine-minute mark in the fourth quarter. Bears up 42-17 on the Washington State Cougars. Jay Finley, you saw his numbers, 119 yards rushing tonight. First game with multiple 100-yard rushers since 2005 against SMU. 
Jeremy Sanders with the carry. Starts right, right goes back left. Stiff arms a man, pushed out of bounds on the far sideline. A flag down as well. We'll check the flag, but a nice ad lib by Jeremy Sanders. Holy, in the 72, on the offense, 10-yard penalty, feet taken down. Well, you knew that was on Jason Smith in the beginning. As soon as he did, so he looked over to the ref and just started walking. Like, well, man, you didn't have to call that one. But, <laughs> but Jeremy Sanders, he shows his, his athleticism, and he comes to the right, and they like running that tall sweep with him, and he reverses field and picks up uh, a, a game that, of course, will not will go for Neil. But uh, he's really showing his ability, and he's gaining knowledge of how to be a, a running back because this kid was playing quarterback this time last year. Absolutely. He played quarterback his entire career. Did it. Yes. Marlin was Super Syntax uh, Player of the Year his senior year. But uh, just it's a way to put another great athlete on the field if he's willing to make the switch to running back, and he has done that uh, without hesitation. So the penalty backs the Bears up, second down 15 from their own 34-yard line. Griffin in the shotgun. Kept, kept the ball, faked it to Finley. Griffin left side, 50, 40, 30, down the sideline. He is caught and brought down at the nine-yard line. Another big play on the legs of Robert Griffin. And J.J. is going to push 200 yards rushing after that big one. Well, I'm thinking this is Groundhog Day. I'm not sure if you've ever seen that movie, Groundhog Day. Well, they do the same thing there. He just reads it, and all of a sudden, here he comes, leaks out to the left side. And I'm going to tell you, I'm surprised Myron Beck chased him down and caught him. But I'm a believer that he got a little tired. After 200 yards, he's a little tired. Robert Griffin comes out to the near sideline. He'll get a breather. Blake Zemanski is on. The applause for the freshman, Robert Griffin. Here's Blake Zemanski, first and goal at the eight-yard line. He'll hand it to Jacoby Jones. Jones banged around like a pinball in the middle of the line. He gets to the five. We'll see where they spot that ball. The Bears continue to run the clock. Check Griffin's numbers after that run. On the night now, now they haven't updated him. He has uh, got to be close to 200 yards rushing in the game this evening. Finally getting a breather as Blake Zemanski is on at quarterback. He does. I mean, John, that run there, he had a 159 prior to that run, and that was uh, close to about 50, 50 yards. So so, so he, he's probably crossed the 200 threshold. We'll see here in a second. But Blake now gets an opportunity to finish his drive off. Second down goal from the six for the Bears. Jacoby Jones with the handoff. He is stacked up again right at the six-yard line. Good stand, back-to-back -back plays by that Washington State defensive front. Defensive end for the Cougars, uh, Kevin Coyman making the tackle there of Jacoby Jones to bring up third down and goal from the six for the Bears who lead 42-17 with 6.45 remaining. Blake Zemanski in the shotgun. Romy Blaylock in front of him. He'll break in motion off to the left side. Snap back. Zemanski will keep to the right side. He'll pass it incomplete. Fired it for Brad Taylor off his hands incomplete. And that'll bring up fourth down for the Bears. Well, that's an instance there where, where actually Blake had an opportunity to, to, to really take a choice of throwing it or running it. Kevin Coyman did a good job of chasing Blake after the play action fake. And he could have tried to run to the pylon and throw it. He just threw it a little bit hard. But uh, Baylor has an opportunity here. This is a great opportunity for Ben Parks to try to knock one through and get a little confidence because he really struggled in the kicking game. They'll spot it at the 13 just inside the right hash. A 23-yard attempt. Kick is up, and it is good. Just inside the left upright. And the Bears answer the field goal from Washington State. 6.21 to play. It's Baylor 45, Washington State 17. Win. Numbers for Robert Griffin, 11 carries, 217 yards on the night. He is more than likely finished for the night. He is on the Baylor sideline, accepting the uh, applause of the Baylor fans who have really come to appreciate this, uh, this true freshman in very short amount of time. And what's not to like about the guy? Nothing at all. Mm -hmm. Bears to kick off, kick angles to the right side, picked up on a hop at the 18-yard line to the 20, out to the 26-yard line. On the return, it was uh, Marshall, 
Well, let's see who that was. I don't think that was the backup quarterback on the return. Timeout on the field, 6-16 to play, 45-7. Bottom of the hour, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Baylor ISP Sports Network. Six sixteen to play. Cougars have the ball. First and ten from their own twenty-six. Baylor up forty-five seventeen over Washington State. Uh, Elliot Coffey with the tackle the pass completed out to uh, Jeshua Anderson. He's pushed out of bounds. Anderson, the uh, NCAA champion in the four hundred meter intermediate hurdles, third in that uh, group of the NCAA's. Baylor's own Robert Griffin as a true freshman. And, and Anderson's just a sophomore, so those two guys may go up against each other in future NCAA outdoor events. Second down, a six-yard pickup. Second down and four. Rogers, the quarterback. There's a pass to Brandon Gibson, center of the field. He's still running. Pushed off to the far side. Finally steps out of bounds at the 30, no, the 27-yard line. Nice pass, catch and run by Brandon Gibson. Check his numbers, his yards starting to pile up this evening. No question, the key player offensively for Washington State. It really is, and he's been a key player this evening, and he's a very smooth receiver. Uh, all Pac-10 last year, All-American candidate, and uh, uh, he, he just, it's a new offense. A young quarterback, and he's having to adjust, but he's having a good game. First to 10 from the Baylor 28 for the Cougars. Gary Rogers at quarterback. Fires it over the middle, it is incomplete. In and out of the arms of Daniel Blackledge, the intended receiver. Elliott Coffey there again on pass defense. Subs in there, Chris Francis is in there, linebacker for the Bears. But John, this game is getting to the point where it's academic almost, and you coach never want to say that, but the thing that they really don't show before this play is, is shown is how many different guys come up to Robert Griffin and the linemen and stuff like that and say thank you. So this team is really melded together. Second down 10 for the Cougars from the Baylor 28. Pass over the middle is incomplete. Wow, pass off the hands of Daniel Blackledge. And Chris Francis went ahead and delivered that blow just to make sure he knew that he was there. The other game in the Big 12 Conference tonight involving a Big 12 school is Kansas and South Florida. 34-34 was the score, and it looks like we'll get you a final in just a moment. Third down and 10 for Washington State from the Baylor 28. Rodgers, the quarterback. Pass right sideline, incomplete. This one through the hands of Blackledge again. Pass defense, Chris Burke for the Baylor Bears. As time expired, South Florida kicked a field goal and wins over the Kansas Jayhawks 37-34 tonight in Tampa. Wow, that was a big game. Kansas, what, 11-1 or 12-1 last season? Right. And that was the big game of the week, at least the big game tonight. And uh, South Florida, they uh, had a good season themselves. And that's a big win for South Florida. Tough loss for the Jayhawks on the road in Tampa. Fourth down and 10. These Cougars will go for it. Pass to Gibson at the 20. He is right at the first down marker. He is picked up and pulled back. It will depend on forward progress. He needed to reach the 18-yard line. It was Antonio Johnson who was there that literally picked him up and pulled him back. Let's check on the spot right at the first down marker. Remember, it was fourth down. Officials will call timeout and bring the chains in to measure. Well, I really expect Brandon Gibson. This is a 45-17 game. You got a kid who's all Pac-10, all All-American candidate. He's not getting anything out of this right at this point in time. And what does he do? He dies for a fourth down with four minutes, five minutes to go in a game that's really over. So uh, I give him uh, his proper due because he is showing the competitive, uh, the competitiveness of him of himself and this Washington State team. They stretch the chains, and by the nose of the football, it is a first down. So give Brandon Gibson credit for that extra effort that gains a first down for Washington State. Officials now will hold the clock, come over to the near side to talk to Baylor head coach Art Bryles. Ricky thinks, uh, what do you think's going on, Rick? 
I think he possibly could be challenging the spot. The coaches were talking about that after the play. They feel like that the progress was not as it was marked, so he may be challenging. Well, I'll tell you, this guy coaches until the end. That's <laughs> here we go. Let's see what challenging the spot that play. Well, that, that's Coach Bryles, and I mean, he wants he wants to teach this team one thing. I don't care what the score is. You don't stop playing until I take you out of the game, and I'm not going to stop coaching until it's, like I say, quadruple zeros on the clock. Well, you've seen those Baylor guys out there playing to the final whistle. Washington State is doing the same. Give both credit. We asked Joe Pavelic, Baylor's junior linebacker, this week about the depth that Baylor has at linebacker. Yeah, you know, we, we feel like we, we, we have some pretty good depth there, you know, which is nice, you know. There's, there's, there's no drop off from, from the first to, to the second team. So it's, a, it's a nice to see us, you know, out there making plays. Joe Paz had another big game tonight for the Bears. Had uh, double digit tackles each of the first two games. And you would think uh, he would be that way again tonight. Waiting on the replay. Challenging the spot of this ball. Situation is this, 5-13 to play. Baylor up 45-17 on Washington State. Cougars on fourth down and 10, went for it, completed a pass to Brandon Gibson. He strained for the first down marker, which would be right there where the ball is currently sitting, the 18-yard line. Coaches on the Baylor sideline challenged that spot. Replay has been completed. And now let's get the ruling. After video review, ruling on the field stand. First down. <laughs> and you have a, a very big reaction from the Baylor crowd, but that great effort by the Baylor defense and by Brandon Gibson. So uh, Baylor, they're playing to the end. The challenge, it is not upheld. You do lose the timeout. Should be a moot point at this point. 5-13 to go. Bears up 45-17. No timeouts remaining for the Bears. Two for Washington State should that come into play. First down 10 for Washington State, despite the play being challenged by the Baylor coaching staff. It is first and 10 from the 18-yard line for the Cougars. Now in the hands of quarterback Gary Rogers. He's come on in relief. Rogers in the shotgun. Has time, passes, left side incomplete. Great break on the ball by Elliott Coffey. Coffey made a dive at the ball, and uh, everything uh, uh, was knocked away incomplete. Well, Ben Woodard, the tight end for Washington State, the backup tight end, but is a very solid receiver. He's one-on-one -on -one with the, uh, with the Elliott Coffey, the backup outside linebacker, and Elliott does a great job of just extending himself at the last minute to knock that pass away. Very athletic play for a linebacker. Second down 10 for Washington State from the Baylor, 18. Three receivers left, one to the right side. One back in the backfield. Snap back to Rodgers in the shotgun. He'll pass it right side, drop at the 15-yard line. Is that Anderson? Yes, Joshua Anderson hit him between the eight and the five, and he dropped it. What coach used to say, it hit him in the wrong spot. <laughs> right in the hands. That, that, actually, I mean, that's one where he saw the, the defender coming at him full speed, and he has to make the decision, hey, let me put this ball away really quickly before I get hit, and then just try to put it away just a little too fast. Chris Burke back there at cornerback on pass defense. Alex Kushmere is in the secondary for the Bears as well. It is third down and 10 for Washington State from the Baylor 18. Rodgers takes the snap in the shotgun again. Steps up in the pocket. Now a run. He gets to the 11-yard line. He's hit hard. He won't get to the first down marker. Rodgers stretched that big 6-7 frame, but it only got him to the 11. A six-yard pickup. It'll be fourth down. Fourth down and four coming up. Chris Francis laid the leather on that tackle. Chris Francis, I mean, he's an angry football player, too. I mean, he the last couple weeks, he's put some big hits on people. And he comes quick, fast, in a hurry. And he gets there with the violent attitude. Son of Baylor great, James Francis. Fourth down, Cougars will go for it. Fourth down and four from the 12-yard line is where it's spotted. Empty backfield, three receivers to the left side, two to the right side. Now flags fly, and they're going to be called for delay of game. Delay of game. Watch this thing. Five-yard penalty. Remain fourth down. Wow. Back them up five. Now fourth down and nine for the Cougars. Let's see if that changes their thinking. 
Well, John, thinking forward to next week, and I know it's a few minutes left in this game. Uh, you know, you really like the way that this team is slowly coming together, and next week will be a pretty a pretty stiff test. Connecticut has been a really solid team the last few years. Uh, started off this, this season well, so uh, this team uh, really should go into that game sky high. Fourth down nine for Washington State. They'll go for it. Line of scrimmage is the 17-yard line. The Bears 17. Rodgers has the snap. Passes. It is complete at the five. And down at the one. Fumble. And Baylor has recovered. Let's see if they roll it a catch. They do. And a fumble recovery for Baylor. Chris Francis on the fumble recovery for the Bears. The pass catch was made. Down at the one-yard line. Another hard hit. And Chris Francis comes away with the fifth takeaway tonight for Baylor. Well, I'll tell you, that's being in the right place at the right time, but the Baylor defenders really laid a lick. The receiver foul in the middle of the field. Go, um, Gary Rogers made a great read, great pass, but at the goal line, right at about the three-yard line, the receiver took a big hit, and Chris Francis at the right place at the right time. Kevin Durrell, the true freshman from Los Angeles, was the uh, receiver who caught that ball and coughed it up. Bears take advantage. They've got it at the three. Now Washington State, it looks like, will take a timeout right here. Timeout, Cougars. We will keep it here. Wonder if they might be challenging the uh, call on the field. Well, I think by looking at that replay as our viewers see it, I mean, that ball looks like it squeezes out right before he hits the ground. So they may, you know, just be taking a little time to see if they can get a review going. 3.37 on the clock. Previous play is under review by video loop. So we'll have another replay with 3.37 <laughs> to go, and Baylor up 45-17 on Washington State. All right, you were talking about next week, Baylor and uh, University of Connecticut. Challenge there, in one sense, will be first road game of the season. Baylor's had the benefit of opening the year with three straight home games. And, uh, you know, for a new coaching staff, a lot of young guys working their way in, that's just an advantage to play three straight at home. Now they've got to take what they've done here on the road to Connecticut. Really do, and it's a new it's a new thing. This coaching staff taking, like you say, this team on the road. And the good thing is Baylor has a lot of veterans. They have kids that have been on the road, the Joe Pavelix, the, you know, the, the Dan Gays, the J.D. Wall. Waltons and Jason Smith. So, you know, those guys will go back to their years of, hey, this is how we travel. But you're right. It's a new thing for this team to go on the road. Ricky Thompson, you think the days are uh, are behind us of worrying about how Baylor will play on the road? Well, I think so. I think some of that went away the last couple years with some big road wins. But, again, this is a new team, new coach. I'd be very surprised if the road is a big issue for these guys the way they played and the video way they handled themselves. There's video evidence to confirm the call on the field. We have a catch, a fumble, and a recovery by the defense. First down. So there's the call from our referee, Roger Gaskamp. Delays the uh, inevitable, you might say, for another few <laughs> minutes. 3.37 on the clock. Bears up 45-17 over Washington State. Smattering of Cougar fans on the far side. So the Bears offense will take over at their own three-yard line, up by 28 points on Washington State, and Blake Szymanski back out there at quarterback for the Bears. Courtney Green, backup center, is in. Szymanski will keep to the right side of the 10, to the 15, to the 19-yard line. One flag down in the Baylor backfield. One flag thrown from the secondary of Washington State. Well, looks like we may have another holding, John. Holding. Number 45 on the offense. Half distance to the ball. Repeat first down. And this is another one of those games where Coach Browse will be happy because they came out, performed, executed, and won the game. But he has a lot of coaching points, which coaches love. They always want a lot of coaching points to keep you on task. And he's got plenty. So the penalty half the distance to the goal. It'll be second down. And uh, that's about a yard and a half penalty. So second down, well, it's still first down, isn't it? So first down, 11 and a half. The ball spotted at the one and a half yard line. In the shadow of their own goal line, Blake Zemanski with a straight eye behind him. Two receivers right, one to the left side. Milking the play clock, 3-10 on the game clock. Bears leading by 28. Is that Jacoby Jones with the carry? The tailback got the call. No, it's Ray Sims with the carry. 
and struggles to get back to the three-yard line. So it'll be second down and ten for the Bears from the three. 250, 249, 248 remaining in this game. And standing between Baylor and a two and one record to start the season. Well, I really do respect this Washington Cougars team. I mean, the, the day for them has been long. Coming in on, on early this morning, having to stay at a hotel for a few hours, come out here and play, and they really put up a fight. Uh, they had quite a few turnovers, which really put them behind the eight ball this evening. Stacy Williams in at a receiver for the Bears. Bears aren't about to throw it. As Ray Sims keeps his feet, keeps going out to the 10, to the 15, to the 16. Boy, they nearly had him down right at the two-yard line, but Sims kept his balance, didn't touch his knee to the ground, and he's out. The ball will be spotted at the 14, but that's enough for a Baylor first down. And J.J. with 2.17 remaining, that might just do it. The Bears might be able to run the clock out for a win. Yeah, Washington State has two timeouts, but I think Coach Wolf probably wants to get this one over with now. So uh, good performance by the Baylor team. Uh, a few errors to, to clean up, but overall, they'll be happy with this today. Blake Szymanski will take the snap. He'll hand it off again to Sims. Coming to the right side, stay in bounds. No, he's pushed out of bounds. <laughs> that will stop the clock. Sims pushed out, helped up by his teammate David Geddes on the near sideline. That will stop the clock with a minute 55 to play. Baylor 45, Washington State 17. That's 51 points last week and 45 tonight. And if folks points in two weeks. Yeah, and if folks question the uh, productivity against an FCS school last week, this is the Pac-10 in Washington State, an FBS school tonight. Error on the clock. Please put one. 55, 5-5 on the clock. Thank Nobody you. wants this game to end. Ray Sims, coaching <laughs> point this week, son, go out of I mean, stay, stay in bounds. In bounds. <laughs> <laughs> it is 1.55 on the clock. It is second and five for the Bears from the 20. Offset eye left in the backfield. Sims remains the tailback. Zemanski the quarterback. Zemanski gives to Sims. Right up the middle, gang tackled by Washington State after a nice surge out across the 25. Tell you, that is good, strong running by Ray Sims, and he's got a Baylor first down across the 25-yard line. Well, on that prior run, I mean, one of the things coaches always do, they do these crazy drills for running backs. A lot of times they're putting their hands on the ground, and they're doing all these drills. And in that instance, it came in handy because Ray Sims put one hand on the ground, almost had the ball on the ground, and kept going. So those drills come in handy for these runners. 141 to play. First down and 10 for the Bears. Nose of the ball just across the 25, and Baylor jumped. Prior to snap, ball start. The 24 on the offense, five-yard penalty. Still first down. Well, Mr. Freeman's getting a little action. Kirby Freeman comes in to, to, to mop up the rest of this game. And I'm going to tell you, I mean, I don't know what Coach Browse will do, but all these penalties have to be drawn ire from him. So uh, a lot of times coaches have a lot of different drills for people who get penalties. And uh, a lot of times it's not a fun early part of the week. Kirby Freeman at quarterback for the Bears. First down and 10 from the 20. He'll turn, hand to Ray Sims. Sims cuts up field, hit hard but down at the 27-yard line. That'll get the five that they lost on the penalty, plus two more with a minute six and counting. The penalty on the previous play was on the guy wearing number 24 on the field. If you look through the binoculars, Gary Rhodes, you'll see that the name of Singletary is on his back. Ah. That is Matt Singletary, son of Mike Singletary, yes, who was switched to receiver this year. Good that Matt getting on the field. And he was a defensive end? He man. was. Yes, right. he was. That's right. Moved to receiver. 40 seconds to play. Second down and eight for the Bears. Freeman will give to Sims again. He is stacked up right at the line of scrimmage, but that might do it right there. 29 seconds and counting. Bears won't have to run another play. Baylor will run their record to two and one on the season. A, an impressive win tonight over the Washington State Cougars, 45-17 the final score. What well, excellent performance by the Baylor Bears, and I tell you, they'll be happy with this win. Coaches will be happy. And they'll make sure, I tell you, the coach will make sure that this team is prepared next week. And I, I expect a great performance from Baylor again against Connecticut. 45-17, the final score. Bears led 28-14 at halftime. It was a record-setting performance tonight by freshman quarterback Robert Griffin. Unofficially 211 yards on the ground this evening, rushing for Robert Griffin. We're going to try to hook up with uh, Baylor coach Art Bryles before we send you away. 
And we appreciate everyone on FSN tuned in tonight watching our broadcast. Thanks to Baylor Vision and the Baylor ISP Sports Network for making that happen. Also televised on FCS Atlantic. Let's go down to Ricky Thompson with head coach Art Bryles. Coach, congratulations on win number two. This was a big one. Yeah, it really is big. And I was really proud of our players and our fans for coming out tonight with all the changes that went on. You know, she, we're, we're messing around to become a pretty good football team, and that's, that's what I'm proud of. Our guys are really buying in. They're playing hard, and we're going to continue to get better. Well, the schedule change, I know it was a day short, but these guys handled it really well. They did a good job, and with it changing like that, it actually puts us on a regular schedule for next Friday. So, it's, you know, we took care of business tonight and it worked out for us, and we're, we're just thankful to be Baylor Bears. Congratulations, Coach. Good luck next week in Connecticut. Thank you much, Rick. Ricky Thompson, thank you very much. With head coach Art Bryles, Bears winners tonight over the Washington State Cougars. The two teams meet at midfield, take an E, and are led in prayer by Baylor University Athletic Chaplain Wes Yeary. So back-to-back -back wins for the Baylor Bears under Art Bryles after a season-opening loss to Wake Forest. Bears score 96 points in the back-to-back -back victories, and Baylor now 2-1 and one on the season, winning tonight over the Washington State Cougars. They'll play that good old Baylor line. The Baylor band will from the far side of the field. Plenty of highlights tonight on the offensive end. On the defensive side, five takeaways by the Baylor defense this evening. Thanks to our Baylor Vision crew that made this possible tonight, along with the Baylor ISP Sports Network. We appreciate those of you watching on FSN and FCS Atlantic. Check it out on FCS Northwest coming up a little bit later. Baylor a winner tonight over Washington State, 45-17, the final score from Floyd Casey Stadium in Waco. Due to the length of the previous program, we now join the following program already.